we give you a lecture given at the Pegasus Mar La Maridian Hotel the Saturday before the Wednesday that we played it. And we told it was in two parts. Well, if you think say you hear something last week, we you hear this week. For those of you who wasn't listening, Bishop Spang is an Anglican bishop who was here under the auspices of the Universal Center of Truth. And he gave a lecture at the Meridian, La Meridian Hotel. And he was very, what they would call controversial, but I say, it's long time we're saying these things on this program. But through his Jamaican and Rasta, people feel says we make up these things. Them don't know, say, after studying and looking for certain things, you must come to certain conclusion. And no matter if you go to university, up there, or you're there in the ghetto down here, if you really realize openly and open your mind, you will realize that a lot of things in the Bible that people hold fast to is illusion and fantasy and folk tale. And even though we can see certain aspects of truth when not taken literally, these people who teach you about the Bible take so much things literal in the Bible that it's so confusing. Because when a man wants to make you know that snake was talking and there is an ark, a 500 foot boat that all appear of every animal in the ark for one year with one window and one door that never open. Are you supposed to believe these things? When a man tells you a man open him hand and part the Red Sea, all of these things, when you hear these things, and you try to take it literally, you start to get confused. And then you get dogmatic without even analyzing things for yourself. Well, this program is all about questioning and answering. And Dr. Sp and not to say doctor, <laughs> Bishop Spang is one of them man where, and I must say, the white man too, because Jamaican people don't love to listen to them own. They want to hear people come from foreign and talk to them. Well, Bishop Spang came. And he did this lecture, so we're going to give you part two. And this is very in keeping with what is going to take place two weeks from now, which is the Christmas story. So he will be elaborating on the Christmas story. So well, why you put it here on cock? Because, yes, we love here when a bishop talk these ways. <laughs> we know so he's not alone in our thinking. I wonder how, I know Reverend Chisholm was there too, you know. Reverend Chisholm, I, I never see my Virginian boy in a long time. I don't hear from him as a matter of fact, you know. Long time I don't hear from Mr. Boyd. I met, I met a man in the airport the other day and he said, Why, Muta? Your name come up in a church. See him like Jesus. <laughs> That's serious thing. Cut it there, Jairo Fem. As we say, put your tape on cock. You don't want to miss this part two of Jai Spang speech that he gave at the Meridian Hotel. Before we bring him to you, we're going to bring him now. We want to show you something. I'll tell you something. You know, a lot of the stories in the Bible have its, its sister or its brother somewhere else in some other culture. The story about how creation started. If you look into the Mayan um, tradition, if you look into the Aboriginal tradition, the Native American tradition, this is similar stories. If you look into Greek mythology, Roman mythology, you know, if you look into the African Yoruba tradition, these are stories. And some of them is much, much older than the stories in the Bible. A lot of people want you to believe that the ways of the world and the beginning and end of the world is only found in the Bible. But we want to declare to you and make you know that the Bible, 3,000 years ago there was no Bible. The books of the Bible was written somewhere in like 600 B.C., 500 B.C. Buddha lived 500 B.C. Zoroastrianism was there. You know, a lot of other cultures had developed before the Hebrew culture. The Hebrew culture is just a periphery 
of different cultures that sprang up in Egypt. We know that. We know that if it wasn't for Egyptian culture, Babylonian culture, and the culture of the Canaanites, you wouldn't have no Hebrew culture. And even the Bible showed you that Moses was an Egyptian, and Moses spent 40 years in Egypt. As a matter of fact, he spent 40 years not only in Egypt, but in the palace of the Pharaoh, studying, learning. At 40 years old, he thought that he was an Egyptian. So there was nothing in his mind about being an Israelite. All of his learning was gotten out of what he learned in the Pharaoh's palace. Until him kill a man and run away. And spend 40 years in the wilderness. Them say. He went amongst a midnight. And married an Ethiopian woman. And spent another 40 years studying these midnight culture. So Moses never have no thought about any Hebrew culture because the Hebrews never have no culture. They were supposed to be living in Israel, in, in sorry, in, in Egypt. Then we come to in the next 40 years of trying to get the so-called children of Israel out of Egypt. And they spent 40 years again wandering in the wilderness with these people who never have nothing. And as a big politician, him start to farm and farm family a culture and a government. And he gave them this God name Yahweh. Now Yahweh is one of the early gods. People don't like it when you talk this way, but it's true. Because there were many gods before Yahweh. The gods of the Canaanites, the Babylonians, the Ethiopians and the Egyptians existed long before anybody hear nothing about Yahweh. But Yahweh and the tradition of these people, who was on the periphery of African culture, became a dominant religion and developed into what we call Judaism, out of this said tribe named Judah. Now, why are we telling you this? We are telling you that, that most of the stories where you find in the Bible, especially in the Jewish tradition, is found other places. And we want to play a Greek mythological story from a Greek god to show you an example of what we're talking about. This is a story of a Greek god. Why listen to this? Cutting edge, IRFM. Deuterion often went to the Caucasus Mountains to comfort his suffering father. He could not break the chains that bound him, but while he was there, he could keep away the eagle that tortured Prometheus. Deuterion was a good son and his father was thankful for his help. Prometheus, who could look into the future, knew that Zeus was planning to flood the earth. He told his son to build an ark and board it with Pyrrha, his virtuous wife. Deucalion did as his father told him. He built a sturdy ark, and when Zeus let loose all the winds and opened wide the floodgates of the sky, he went aboard with Pyrrha. For nine days and nine nights it rained, until the whole earth was flooded. Nothing but the highest mountain peaks remained above the water, and all mortals were drowned. Only Deucalion and Pyrrha were saved. They floated in their ark over the deep, dark waters. On the tenth day the rain stopped, and slowly dry land began to appear. Deucalion and Pyrrha stepped out of the ark and walked about on the desolate earth. Lonesome and forlorn, they came to a temple grown over with seaweed and entered it. The sacred fire on the altar had gone out, but they lit it again with the embers they had kept glowing aboard the ark and lifted up their hands in prayer to the gods to thank them for saving their lives. Zeus was touched by their piety and felt sorry for them because they were so lonesome. He spoke to them and said, Pick up the bones of your mother and throw the throw over your shoulders. Deucalion understood that Zeus did not mean their mortal mothers, but their mother Earth. Rocks were her bones. He told Pyrrha to pick up a handful of stones and throw them over her shoulder while he did the same. Behind Deucalion, a score of men sprang up, 
and there behind Pyrrha a score of women. This new race of mortals was called Deucalion's race. The Deucalion race, made from stone, was hardier than the one made from clay. The new mortals withstood better the stings of Pandora's miseries, which of course had flown high and dry during the flood, and plague mankind to this very day. The winds had carried on as they wished when Zeus flooded the earth. They were powerful fellows, and when they stormed together, they brought confusion and destruction, whirling dust and water all the way up to Olympus. Zeus decided that they needed a dependable guardian who would keep them locked up and let out only one at a time. He chose Aeolus, a grandson of Deucalion and Pyrrha, to be the keeper of the winds and sent him to live with them and guard them in a hollow cliff far out at sea. The winds hated to be confined. They stormed and howled around Aeolus, trying to force their way out of the cavern. But Aeolus was steady and strong and kept them in hand. When Poseidon, or one of the other gods, called for a wind, Aeolus pierced the wall of the cliff with his spear and let the wind out. Then he plugged up the hole and kept it closed until it was time for the wind's return. When Boreas, the north wind, was called for, he rushed out icy and wild, tearing up trees and piling up waves in front of him. When Notus, the south wind, was let out, he pressed himself groaning through the hole in the cliff. He was so heavy with moisture that water dripped from his tangled beard, and he spread a leaden fog over land and sea. Yeah, we just want to play that fear. This is Greek mythology, and we want the people them to know that these stories is in many cultures. We mustn't believe that the Bible story is the oldest of these stories. And because it is not the oldest, it is not the original, most original. If we want the original story, we have to go into the deepest African, Egyptian, Nubian, Ethiopian culture to see. And we have to take the stories in context. So we want to play <coughs> John Spang. We want to give you a synopsis of what happened last week when your story asked the Virgin a question and then say, I'm going to elaborate on it in the next talk. I'm going to give you the next talk, but I could give you what we asked him first. Here goes. That set of rules, I recognize our first question. Yes, um, you mentioned about the Adam and Eve story and how it has oppressed um, the concept of the feminine. Um, wouldn't you say that in the, in the need to revive that feminine um, quality, the Christians has also made a blunder in recognizing a virgin birth. I, I am seeing that the virgin birth is the next aspect of the, the degrading of the woman and the feminine quality. I, ha I think you're right. But I'd like, I'd like not to address that question until the second session, because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in the second session. What I'm going to do is try to take some of these principles and go through the birth stories of Jesus and show how they're in conflict with a lot of things. But yes, I'd say the virgin birth story is a sexist story. At its heart, it's a sexist story, and it's been used throughout history to denigrate women. Uh, let me build on that just a little bit, because I won't be able to do it this afternoon. And then I'll come to the next question. This will just be brief. When the church decided that there was only one ideal woman, and she was a virgin mother, it sort of meant every other woman was reduced to being less than ideal. It's very hard to be a virgin mother. You know, most people just can't put that together. So if, if only one woman is ideal and she is a virgin mother, every other woman is reduced to being something insignificant or evil or deformed or not quite whole. That's the first bad lesson of that. And then the second bad lesson of that is and what the church did to the virgin over history was to say she was a virgin mother, and then we said she was a postpartum virgin, and then we said she was a perpetual virgin, 
And then we said she was immaculately conceived. We didn't do that until the 19th century. And then in the 20th century, she, we said she was bodily assumed into heaven. Only then did she become fully an object of worship. Now, let me ask you what there is about woman that is so negative in the minds of men who are building these doctrines that before a woman can be considered a possible object of worship, she has to be desexed and dehumanized. Because by the time you get through with what we did to Mary, she's neither a human being nor a woman. Finally, I would say, who is making these definitions of the idea woman? The priesthood of the church was. What was the priesthood of the church? They were celibate males. I submit to you that a permanent virgin is an ideal woman only to a celibate male. Okay, so that was the question that yours truly asked him. And then in the second part of his speech, he elaborated on the Christmas story. So we're going to give you the Christmas story after these advertisements. Cutting edge IRFM. We want to go into this tape and show you what this man is dealing with. What I'm saying, it's all about the Christmas story and the New Testament. Here goes. Cutting edge IRFM. Of the Bible. And look at it from a very different perspective. And I'd like to take the part of the Bible that I believe is the best known part of the Bible at all. I think everybody knows the Christmas story. You don't even have to go to church to know the Christmas story. You can just walk through a shopping center and they sing to you about it and you see pictures of it. And so the images of a manger and stars and wise men and shepherds and angels and Mary and Joseph are etched in our memories. Most of us have been in Christmas pageants. Most of us have played Mary or Joseph or at least a shepherd or an angel at some point in our lives. And so we think we know these stories very, very well. But you'd be surprised at how much we do not know about these stories. Uh, let me ask you a couple of questions just to test the level of knowledge. Uh, how did Mary and Joseph journey from Bethlehem I mean, from Nazareth down to Bethlehem for the taxation. How did they travel on a donkey? Uh, how did the wise men travel on camels? On camels. Where in Jerus Where in Bethlehem was Jesus actually born? In what sort of structure? Born in a stable. And what was in the stable? All sorts of animals. Well, that's very good, except none of that's in the Bible. <laughs> Let me ask you to go home today and to read Matthew 1 and 2 and Luke 1 and 2. That's the birth story. And you'll find some interesting things. You'll find that there's nothing said about how Joseph and Mary went from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. She didn't even ride side saddle you'll find that a camel is never mentioned in the wise man's story, that we just put them there with our imaginations. You'll find that there is no stable in Luke's gospel, and there are obviously no animals because there's no stable. That's all put into that story by our creativity over the centuries. There's one thing in Luke's story, and that's a manger, which is a feeding trough. And around that feeding trough, our imaginations created a stable and populated it with animals. So the first thing we need to recognize is that we might not know those stories as well as we think we do, because what we know is the pageants that, that we have acted out. So let me tell you some things about the stories. First of all, the birth stories from Matthew and Luke did not come into the Christian tradition until the ninth decade. They make their initial appearance in Matthew's Gospel, and Matthew's Gospel is written between 80 and 85. And they're also present in Luke's Gospel, and Luke's Gospel I would date between 88 and 92. So you're talking about ninth and early 10th decade when the birth stories come into the Christian tradition. Now how do we know that? Well, we have in the Bible earlier works. Paul wrote all of his epistles sometime between 50 and 64. Paul died in 64. 
No gospel had been written when Paul died. Paul never read a gospel. So the Pauline writing is the earliest writing we have in the New Testament. And what does Paul say about the origins of Jesus? He says that he was born of a woman and born under the law, like every other human being. Not anything miraculous about that. He says that according to the flesh, he was descended from the house of David. Nothing miraculous about that. And Paul says that Jesus has a brother that Paul really didn't like very much. His name was James. And if you read about, if you read the first chapter of Galatians, which is one of Paul's early epistles, you'll find that James, the brother of the Lord, and Paul are in radical conflict. So the Pauline corpus doesn't seem to know anything about a miraculous birth story. So that needs to be registered. Second thing that needs to be registered is when the first gospel was written, and that was Mark, it's not first in the Bible, but it's the first one to be written. And it's dated, most scholars would date it between 65 and 75. I think it's on the late side of that. I would date it between 70 and 75. But it's the first gospel and there's no birth story in it. Indeed, Mark begins his gospel by saying, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and he tells you that God entered into Jesus not at his birth, but at his baptism, when the heavens opened and the Spirit descended and the voice of God declared Jesus to be God's Son. But there's no birth story there. It simply is not present. The birth story appears in Matthew. And then, about five to ten years later, a second version of the birth story appears in Luke. Then when John writes the last gospel, the birth story disappears. John has no story of the birth of Jesus. John says that Jesus was the enfleshment of the divine word of God that spoke in creation. The Logos that said, let there be light, was simply enfleshed in Jesus. But there's no story of a virgin birth, no story of a miraculous birth, except that John wants people to know that what Jesus was, was the eternal word of God manifested in a human life. So that in the five major writings of the Bible, only two of them give us the birth narratives, and the other three either seem to know nothing about the birth story, or, in John's case, he could not help but have heard about that story since it was the last gospel, and he chooses to omit it from his records. So that's the first thing we need to embrace. Second thing we, uh, the third thing, that's the second thing we need to embrace. The third thing we need to embrace is that in the stories between Matthew and Luke, there are a lot of incompatible details. Now that comes as a surprise, mostly, because the primary way we have experienced the birth stories of Jesus is through Christmas pageants. And in our Christmas pageants, what we normally do is that we follow Luke's storyline until the shepherds visit, and then we add Matthew's wise men as the final scene to the story. But that's to be biblically illiterate. But that doesn't stop us from doing these pageants this way every year. Matthew's story of Jesus' birth and, Jesus and Luke's story of Jesus' birth have a lot of interesting things that separate them. Let me articulate them. In Matthew's story, Mary and Joseph live in a house in Bethlehem, over which a star can shine, into which wise men can come. Matthew then has a problem because everybody knows Jesus was called the Nazarene or the Galilean. So Matthew has got to have a tradition that says at some point he moved away from Bethlehem, his home, and went back to Nazareth and to Galilee. And so we have the story of, of Herod's brother comes to the throne and Joseph is warned to take Jesus up into Galilee. Luke believes that the Holy Family lives in Nazareth already in Galilee. But Luke knows that the tradition is that Jesus is going to be the Messiah, the son of David, and the proper birthplace for the Messiah is down in Bethlehem. So Luke has to develop a story that gets Jesus out of Nazareth and down to Bethlehem so that the Christ can be born in the proper place. So that you've got this interesting story where Matthew thinks they live in Bethlehem and has to have a story to get them back to Nazareth, and Luke believes they live in Nazareth, and so has to develop a story that gets them down to Bethlehem. That's not the only problem. 
Both Matthew and Luke say that Jesus was born when Herod was the king. We know from secular records that Herod died in 4 B.C. So Jesus was born four years before Christ. Now that shouldn't upset anybody. That shouldn't upset anybody because they didn't divide the calendar into AC, AD and BC until well into the Christian era. And they didn't have good records and they came pretty close. But most scholars believe that Jesus was born somewhere between 4 and 8 BC. So Herod is the king. He died in 4 BC. But Luke says that Jesus was born when Quirinius was governor of Syria because it was Quirinius that ordered this special taxation. We know from secular records that Quirinius didn't become the governor of Syria until the year 6 to 7 AD. Jesus would have been 10 years old by that time. So you put the dating together and they clearly don't have it straight. Something's wrong. There's some other problems. There is no record in any historic source of a government that ever required people to go back to the place of their origin to be enrolled in a taxation. And yet that's the basis upon which Luke tells his story. There's also no evidence anywhere that a woman ever had to go do that because women didn't pay taxes. Women were property upon which tax was paid. So the idea that Joseph would take Mary the Bible describing her as being great with child, and that means at least eight months pregnant, it seems to me, all the way from Nazareth down to Bethlehem is almost unthinkable when you recognize that there was 94 miles between Nazareth and Bethlehem. What man in his right mind will take an eight to nine months pregnant woman on a 94 mile donkey ride? you begin to raise questions about the historicity of these narratives. Now, that's not the only place where there's a problem. Matthew says that Jesus' life was threatened by King Herod, and so King Herod uh, sent the emissaries down to Bethlehem to kill all the Jewish male babies, two years old and under, to get rid of this pretender to his throne. And Joseph is warned in a dream to take Jesus and flee down to Egypt. There's that wonderful story I remember from Sunday school where a child was drawing the Easter story and drew an airplane with Mary and Joseph in the airplane. And the teacher said, what in the world is this? And he said, that's the flight into Egypt. <laughs> and there was this other figure driving the airplane. The teacher said, who is that? And he said, that's Pontius the pilot. <laughs> So our imaginations have, have roamed free. But you see, while Matthew says that Jesus is fleeing for his life into Egypt, Luke says he was circumcised on the eighth day and presented in the temple in Jerusalem on the fortieth day and then made his way in a very leisurely fashion back to Nazareth. So the stories have some incompatibilities. Now the next thing we need to look at the story is that there's some things in those stories that just don't happen outside of mythology. Does anybody know of a star that travels so slowly across the sky that three guys can follow that star until they get to their destination? The understanding behind that was a three-tiered universe. They thought that the sky was the roof of heaven and that God lived just above the sky and God or one of God's angels could drag a star slowly enough across the roof so that those wise men could follow. But that's not the world that you and I live in. We know something about the distances of stars. So that becomes a problem. It also becomes a problem when we read that that star, after reappearing in Jerusalem, led the wise men down a six-mile road to Bethlehem. You need to understand that Bethlehem was a tiny little city of maybe 300 people. And that the road that connected Jerusalem to Bethlehem was not your Highway 2000. It was a dirt track. So that story says this star led these three guys down this dirt track for six miles. And then it shined over one particular house in Bethlehem. Now, the story says that these three wise men went down. It doesn't say they were riding on camels, but we always put them on camels. They went down to that home, 
And they went into that home and they presented gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh with the star shining on that house. And the next day, when the wise men don't go back to Herod, Herod decides he's got to go down to Bethlehem, and in order to make sure he gets rid of this Jesus, he's got to kill all the Jewish male babies two years old and under. Well, now, have you ever lived in a town that just had 300 people? Don't you sort of know that in a town of 300 people, everybody knows everything about everybody? Do you suppose that in a little town of 300 people, a light leading three wise men could come trumping down a six-mile-long road and shine over one particular house, and then nobody could tell Herod the next day which house that was? That just doesn't happen in the world I live in. The wise men say that what they are doing is looking for the birth of a king. But Matthew's Gospel tells us that Jesus' father was a carpenter. How many people set out on camel or on donkey or on foot to follow a star to be led to the place where a king is born only to discover that that king is the son of a carpenter? The story is beautiful and it's romantic, but it doesn't add up literally. Now there's some other things. In Luke's version of the story, where he has Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist, who are described as very elderly, uh, the text says, past the time of women, which is an interesting way to talk about menopause, <laughs> past the time of women, but nonetheless, Elizabeth gets pregnant with John the Baptist. And then six months later, says the story, Mary gets pregnant with Jesus. And Mary goes down into the hill country of Judah to visit her kinswoman. Doesn't say what the kin is. It was Wycliffe, an English scholar, that decided John the Baptist and Jesus was, were first cousins. But he decided that in the 14th century. Now, that idea hadn't been abroad, but that's what people say. They were cousins. The only text says that the Mary and Elizabeth were kin. Now, when Mary goes down to visit Elizabeth, the story says that the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped to salute the baby in Mary's womb. Does that sound like history to you? And then Elizabeth, recognizing that her baby has leaped to salute Mary's baby, says, why is it that my baby leaps to salute your baby? And the intimation is that your baby is going to be greater than mine. And of course, that was the relationship the church was trying to establish between John the Baptist and Jesus. He must increase, I must decrease. So these words are put into the mother of John the Baptist. Well, Elizabeth and Mary were both Jewish mothers. I've never met a Jewish mother that would say to another, your son's going to be greater than mine. <laughs> so I think, again, we are dealing with something other than history. What is it? Where do these stories come from? Where does the content come from? When I wrote a book called Liberating the Gospels, Reading the Bible with Jewish Eyes, that Sheila has been using as a study, group, study book in her church, I spent a lot of time developing what I called a midrashic approach to Scripture. What in the world does midrash mean? Indeed, I wanted to call that book The Gospels as Midrash, but my publisher wouldn't let me. They said, Jack, people read that title and, you, and they'll think you're saying the Gospels have some sort of skin irritation on them. And that just won't make any sense at all. But what is Midrash? Midrash is a Jewish storytelling technique. The Jewish people thought nothing of going back into their religious heritage and lifting a story that had been told about somebody else and retelling it in the present moment. It wasn't that they were trying to say, this really happened, or this really didn't happen, but I'm going to pretend it did. What they were really saying is, the God that our ancestors met in Moses, or Samuel, or David. We believe we are meeting that same God in Jesus. And so it's okay to take stories from their lives and retell them about Jesus. It's God that is eternal. It's God that transcends the time. And so all of the details of the birth narratives can be located in the scriptures of the Hebrew people, not because they predicted future events, but because the people who wrote those stories wrote them in terms of the events of their own Jewish past. Now let me try to illustrate that. 
the story of the virgin birth. Then there's the tradition in Matthew, and Matthew justifies it by quoting a text from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. That verse is a familiar verse to most Christians. It says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and shall bring forth a child, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. If you have a Revised Standard Version of the Bible and read Isaiah 7.14, you will discover the word virgin is not in it. The word virgin is in it only in the King James translation. Why do you suppose that is? It's because when Matthew quoted the book of Isaiah, he did not quote it in its original Hebrew. Matthew appeared not to read Hebrew. Matthew wrote his gospel in Greek. But every time he quoted the Old Testament, he quoted a Greek translation of the Old Testament. In Hebrew, Isaiah 7.14 says, Behold, a woman shall conceive. And the Hebrew word is Alma, A-L-M-A-H. That is not the Hebrew word for virgin. The Hebrew word for virgin is Betula, B-E-T-H-U-L-A-H. When that verse was translated into Greek, when the Hebrew scriptures were translated into Greek. They translated the Hebrew word Alma, which means a woman, with the Greek word Parthenos, which does have within it the connotation of a virgin. And when Matthew was quoting that Greek text, it was brought into Matthew's Gospel in ancient traditions as the word virgin. But it was taken out of all the modern scholarly editions because they recognized the error. Actually, Jewish scholars recognized the error very early in Christian history and kept saying to the Christians, that's not what, Matthew was, not what Isaiah was talking about, but the Christians were drunk with power and they didn't bother to listen. Now, if you read the rest of that story in Isaiah 7, you will discover that what is really happening is that the, the city of Jerusalem is under siege by the kings of Syria and the northern kingdom. And the king is out looking at his battlements, and Isaiah the prophet comes, and Isaiah says, you don't need to worry about these people down here besieging your city. They're not going to be significant. They're going to finally go away. But the king is not sure of that. And so Isaiah says to the king, well, just ask a sign of God, and God will give you a sign that these kings that are bothering you now are not going to finally destroy the city. And the king refuses to ask a sign, and Isaiah gets exasperated, and he says, you not only weary me, you're wearying God to the king. And then he says, I'm going to give you a sign whether you like it or not. Behold, an Alma will conceive, or is with child. In the, in the Hebrew tradition, she already is pregnant. Behold, an Alma, a young woman, is with child, and the child shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then it goes on to say, before this child is raised to the age of being able to decide the difference between right and wrong, these two enemies are going to be destroyed. That could hardly be referring to something that happened eight months, eight hundred years later. Luke seems to know that, and so Luke never uses that text when he tells the story of the Virgin. So the problems began to unfold, but let's be positive. What is what is the message that they're trying to achieve? Where do the wise men come from? Well, have you ever read Isaiah 60? The author of Matthew has surely read Isaiah 60 because he crafted the story of the wise men right out of Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 says, Kings shall come to the brightness of God's rising. They will come on camels. That's the only place camels come into that story. It's in Isaiah, not in Matthew. They will come from Sheba, and guess what they will bring? They will bring gold and frankincense. Now, doesn't that sound just a little bit familiar? But you all went to good Sunday school, so you say, where's the myrrh? <laughs> well, if you go back and read Isaiah, you will find that the myrrh is present if you know how to read it with Jewish eyes. Because that passage says, kings shall come to the brightness of God's rising. They will come from on camels, and they will come from Sheba. Sheba. Now the Jewish mind would say, ah, Sheba. I remember another story in our history where another royal visitor went to visit another king of the Jews. And back to the story of the Queen of Sheba visiting King Solomon, they would go in their text. And when they get back to that text, 
they discover that the Queen of Sheba brought Solomon truckload after truckload after truckload of spices. The only spice they knew in the Middle East was myrrh. And what was myrrh? It was Jewish deodorant. You know, they didn't take a lot of baths, and myrrh smelled good, so they put myrrh in their clothes so they wouldn't be offensive. And then myrrh was used to drown the smells of death. A Jewish man or woman, when he or she died, was not buried, not embalmed. That only took place in Egypt. The Jewish man or woman was simply wrapped in a cloth with lots of myrrh so that the myrrh drowned out the, the odor of decaying flesh. And the Jews buried their dead very quickly. Yeah, I know a whole heap of people are listening. And I get vexed. Because of what the man I say. Because they get vexed with me to when me say it. I mean, don't know this man. It's the first I see. It. But truth is truth. And examination is necessary. How for people read the Bible like it don't need to be examined. Like it's not man write it. Because they have this notion that the Bible is written by the hands of God. I don't know where God get on from what them say. It. And believe it. And be like them know it. That them preach it though. And die for it. And we know say it's just man. It's just man. Putting a diaphragm coming through. So all of the elements of the story are in Isaiah 60. If you know how to read it. And what a perfect story it was. Because you see the purpose of a birth story is not to tell you what happened when Jesus was born. The purpose of a birth story is to say this greatness that we experienced in his adult life was present even at the moment of his birth. And so gold became the symbol of the fact that he was a king, the king of kings we called him. Frankincense was a symbol of the fact that he was perceived as divine because frankincense is a gift offered to God. And myrrh, that was a gift that showed how his life was going to be tragic and how it was going to die. So it made a perfect sort of opening vignette. But there's a star. Now, there are a couple of places you can get the star. You can take kings coming to the brightness of God's rising and turn that into a star. But the Jews did a little more than that. The star of David rose in the east in the story of Balaam and Balak in Numbers 22 to 24 and guided other royal visitors. In the Jewish tradition, not in the scriptures, but in the tradition of the rabbis, they wrote stories about how a star was in the sky when Abraham was born, and a star was in the sky when Isaac was born, and a star was in the sky when Moses was born, because all of those were great leaders. And so they wanted to have it a heavenly star announcing the birth of someone as great as Moses, and that was simply put back into the Jesus story. And then the story of King Herod going down to Bethlehem to kill all the Jewish male babies, where does that come from? Well, go back and read the story of Moses. When Moses was born, a wicked king named Pharaoh went down to Egypt and killed all the Jewish male babies to try to get rid of Moses, who was going to challenge him in later life. So Matthew takes that Moses story, and he retells it about Jesus of Nazareth in order for his Jewish readers to know that I'm going to tell you about a person who is a new and greater Moses. That's the story that's being unfolded in this midrashic storytelling fashion. It's a very different way to read the scriptures. Now, let me move on with Matthew for just a moment because in the chapters of Matthew, first and second, Joseph is introduced for the first time. Joseph is the earthly father of Jesus in this drama. He doesn't appear in any gospel before Matthew, which is, of course, only Mark. He just isn't there. But Joseph never appears in any gospel at all after the birth story. He disappears. People wonder, whatever happened to Joseph? He just is gone. And when I was growing up in my Sunday school, we said, well, he must have, he must have died when Jesus was a little, just a little boy. And if you look at pictures of Joseph in Christian art, he's always a very old man. Mary's young, he's very old. That comes out of the Gospel of James, which was a third century book which suggested that it was this old man, Joseph, who agreed to protect Mary's virginity. And so he married her and sheltered the child. That's third century Christian history. But Joseph is introduced. And it's interesting what you find out about Joseph in the first two chapters of Matthew. You find that Joseph has a father named Jacob. You find out that Joseph is one who is constantly 
being identified with dreams. God never speaks to Joseph in Matthew's Gospel except through a dream. It's an unnamed angel that tells Joseph that he can take Mary's wife because she is not a guilty woman. It is an angel in a dream that tells Joseph he must get up and flee down to Egypt. It's an angel in a dream that tells Joseph it's safe for him to come back. It's an angel in a dream that tells him it's now that he must go up to Nazareth. Joseph, God never communicates to Joseph except in a dream. Indeed, the text of Isaiah 7:14 is dictated by this angel in a dream to Joseph. Um, you know, this the angel was sort of a Bible quoter trying to prove a case, I suppose. And all of that is in the story. And Joseph's primary role is to save Jesus from death. And the way Jesus is saved by Joseph is that he takes him down to Egypt. Does any of that sound familiar to any of you? Well, if you'd go back into the book of Genesis and read the story of Joseph, the coat of many colors Joseph, you would discover that Joseph has a father named Jacob, that Joseph is overwhelmingly identified with dreams. He's even called a dreamer. He interprets the dream of the Pharaoh's butler and baker. He interprets the dream of the Pharaoh. It is as an interpreter of dreams that he rises into power in Egypt. He even has dreams as a child about how his sheath of wheat will stand up in the, in the fields and all his brothers will come and bow down to him. It didn't exactly make him popular with his brothers. But he was called a dreamer. So this Joseph is also overwhelmingly identified with dreams. And the role of this Joseph in the history of salvation is that he's supposed to save the people of the covenant God's chosen from death. And how does he save them? He saves them by taking them down into Egypt to avoid death by famine. So Joseph in the Hebrew scriptures has a father named Joseph, is identified with dreams and saves the people of the covenant by going down into Egypt. Joseph in Matthew's gospel has a father named Jacob, is overwhelmingly identified with dreams and saves the child of the covenant from death by going down to Egypt. I just want you to be aware that you're not reading history. You're reading an interpretation of the life of Jesus written as the Jews write their sacred story by taking stories out of the past and retelling them in the present. Let me go for just a moment to Luke. Luke has no wise men. Luke has no star. Luke changes those symbols. The star becomes a heavenly host that breaks through the darkness of night to sing to startle shepherds. Luke didn't much like magi. If you read the book of Acts, you'll find that Luke has some pretty negative things to say about someone who is called Simon Magus. That's a magi. So Luke doesn't want to deal with that. He doesn't like royal people and kings. He likes common people. And so Luke replaces the wise men with these humble shepherds. And he replaces the star with angels that break through the midnight sky to announce the birth of this Jesus. And Luke's angels give the shepherds two signs. The way you will identify this child is that he is wrapped in swaddling cloths. We always read that as clothes, but the word is cloths. He's wrapped in swaddling cloths, and he's lying in a manger. And as I suggested, it was from that manger that we created a stable around it and populated it with animals, but only the manger is in the text. So that, that Luke gives us those two rather interesting clues. Now, what do they mean? Well, if you look into the Hebrew Scriptures at every reference to a manger or a crib, you'll find the primary one occurs in the first chapter of the book of Isaiah. And the prophet is mourning the fact that the people of Israel don't know who their God is. And he says, why, well, even, even the donkey knows whose crib he's eating from, who knows who his master is. And the idea grew that the ideal Israelite, the, the quintessential Jew, would be somebody who from the moment of his birth was faithful to God, who from the moment of his birth knew whose manger he was fed in. And so this story is taken by Luke and placed into the gospel narrative. And he also has David. Remember, David is the shepherd boy of Bethlehem when he was called to be the king. And so he puts the shepherds of David's childhood into his story. 
And then he says, the baby is wrapped with swaddling cloths. Have you ever read the book called The Wisdom of Solomon? I refer you to chapter 7. In chapter 7 of The Wisdom of Solomon, Israel's greatest, most opulent, and wealthiest king says, When I was born, I was carefully swaddled, because that's the only way a king can come to his people. Luke was going to tell the story of Jesus as the new king of the universe, rising out of the line of David to reestablish not the Jewish hegemony over the world, but God's hegemony over all creation. Luke was constantly calling, using symbols to call Jesus beyond boundaries and to call those who follow Jesus beyond boundaries into a new sense of humanity. And so he puts him in the clothing of Israel's most opulent king because that's the only way a king can come to his people. And so the details of the story begin to flow together as the Jews try to interpret the meaning of Jesus of Nazareth. Now let me ask you to just consider one possibility. How many of you have waited outside a room where a midwife was delivering a baby or outside a maternity ward at a hospital because you knew that a great leader of the world was about to be born. That isn't the way it works. You know, the, usually the only people that are waiting anxiously are your mother and your father. And of course, they might think you're going to be the greatest baby that God has ever created. But history has a way of saying that the vast majority of us become something less than that. When you read a birth story, what you're reading is history read back into the moment of birth. When a great leader of the people of Jamaica dies, you do something to remember the great leader. And one of the things you do is to note the date of his birth. And usually around great leaders, stories develop that indicate that people recognize greatness at a very early age. You know, what we say about George Washington is that even as a boy, he never told a lie, which is probably a lie. <laughs> but you develop stories where you go back to the childhood of people who have become great. And you say, we saw this greatness at the very beginning. That's what the birth narratives are. So what do the birth narratives mean? They don't tell us much about what actually happened when I was born. They tell us a lot about how great people thought Jesus was. The virgin birth says that we believe we have met in this Jesus a presence of God that human life by itself could never have created. And so we tell a story about how human life did not by itself create it. We believe that we have met in this Jesus a, a life that was so significant that when he was born the whole universe rejoiced. A star appeared in the sky, angels sang because he's going to be everything that the human heart yearns for. That's what's important about the stories. They don't tell us much about how Jesus was born. They tell us an enormous amount of what people thought about the adult Jesus of Nazareth and how it was that they saw in this Jesus the very presence of God. Let me try to pull this finally together. I cannot tell you what God is like. You cannot tell each other what God is like. The Pope cannot tell you what God is like. Billy Graham cannot tell you what God is like. Jerry Falwell cannot tell you what God is like. The Ayatollah Khomeini cannot tell you. The Buddha can't tell you what God is like. Nobody can ever tell another human being what God is like. That is beyond our capacity. All any of us can ever do is to tell another person how we believe we have experienced God. That's all we can tell. We don't possess God. We experience God. We can't take our possession and make a weapon of this God and attack other people with our God weapon. We can only say, I believe I experience God in this way. So let me tell you in conclusion how I believe I experience God. God is infinitely real for me. 
I define God as the source of life. That means that every place where I see life being lived, I see the very presence of God. All life, all life, but particularly present in human life, because human life is self-conscious and human life has the capacity to grow beyond its boundaries. So I see God as the source of life. And if God is the source of life, then I worship God by living fully. I see God as the source of love, and I mean all of love. I mean the love that causes a mama cat to lick the fur of a baby kitten. All love, but particularly the love that is self-conscious, that binds human lives together in the bands of love and enhances our life because love is always the creator of life. So I see God as the source of love. So everywhere I see love, I think I see the presence of God. And I worship God by loving wastefully. And I define God or I experience God as the ground of all being, a difficult phrase. Paul Tillich made it famous for me. He was a German Lutheran background theologian of the 40s and 50s. But the best way to translate the ground of all being for me is to say that if God is the ground of all being, then I worship God by having the courage to be everything that I am. And the more fully I can be myself, the more people will see the very presence of God within me. So I see God as the source of life, the source of love, and the ground of being. I worship by living and loving and being. And I want to be a disciple of this God. And that doesn't mean I want to make everybody an Episcopalian or an Anglican. I'm not at all interested in converting people to being Anglicans. I'm not even interested in converting Jews and Muslims to being Christians. Now I think we've got to move beyond that. But I do believe that I have a responsibility. And my responsibility as a disciple of this God is to live my life in such a way that I can build a world or help to build a world or encourage others to help to build a world where every other human being has a better chance to live and to love and to be. And why am I a Christian? Because when I look at the life of Jesus of Nazareth, I see a life so fully alive that I believe I see the very source of life in him. I see a love so totally and so wastefully given that I believe I see the source of love in him. And I see one who has the courage to be all that he is, so I see the very ground of being in him. So I walk with this Jesus into the life of this world, trying to bring life to people, trying to bring love to people, trying to help people become all that they are. That's the message of the Christian church, and that's the message that we see in the birth stories of Jesus, where people said, somehow, some way, in and through this life, God has entered human history. And we see the presence of this God in the life of this world. Yes, know that you have heard. Time to talk. That virgin was came here through the universal center of truth, which is on Seymour Park. These people brought him here, and he had a lecture at the La Meridian Pegasus Hotel. The man talking about the mythology of the Christian Bible. The man talking about the non-historicity, if there's such a word, of the Bible. So what do you think? Because we say it so much time. But you know, I never hear mention, I never hear mention that between Matthew and Luke, they have a different great-great-grandfather of Jesus. Yes. In Matthew 1, and if you read Matthew 1 and 2, it tells you that Jesus' great-great-great-grandfather was the son of David by the name of Solomon. And in Luke 3, it tells you that Jesus' great-great-great-grandfather was the son of David by the name of Nathan. So that is really a big discrepancy in the great-great-grandfathers. Now I went to this man and I said to him, 
it's such as the case of these mythology. And him don't really believe that there was a Joseph. Because he's saying that in, in Matthew 1, which is not even him saying, this is the Bible saying. Matthew 1 tells that Joseph father didn't name Jacob. And as him show you that Joseph got these dreams and things. And it's the same story about Joseph coat of many colors and get dreams and him father named Joseph. I mean Jacob and all these things. And he went down into Egypt. I went to him and I say, Well, give me what you know. And given all of these things that you say, isn't it a, go a right conclusion to say that, that if all of these discrepancies is there, why should we believe that there was a real Jesus? Why is not the Jesus of the Bible also a mythology? Because we can show you through Greek and Roman mythology that Jesus is a mythology. There was no man on earth that named Jesus. Mr. Ian Boyne don't like I say that, but it's true. You know? Given all of these discrepancies, people don't want to hear that there's contradictions in the Bible, but I remember I did a, a program about the 101 contradictions of the Bible. A whole heap of people get vexed with me. A whole heap of people. But if it's not truth, just look and see if it is there. Because there is a contradiction in saying that Jesus' great-great-great-grandfather is Solomon, the son of David. And then the next man tells us that Jesus' great-great-great-grandfather is Nathan, the son of David. And then you have all the other discrepancies. Yeah, man, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing when we look in the stories, when we look and realize historically, because most Christians is not interested in knowing the truth. They want to believe. They don't want to know the truth. They are comfortable with their belief. And you can't knock a man belief. But when that man uses him belief to decide your destiny and to decide what you going to happen to you and what how you should live, then it becomes a problem. Your belief is your belief. Your belief is not necessarily truth or reality. And it has to stay in a belief. You can use your belief and say it's history. And declare it as history. And when it comes up to scrutiny, you don't want it to be scrutinized because you know you add something else to it and say. You can't scrutinize the word of God. That is what you catch your people with. Because when you start to use your intelligence, you come up on this door where you say, don't question the word of God. Because if you question the word of God, you're going to go to hell and burn up in fire. You think it's Cape Town that talk about fire? The Christians, the first set of people I hear talk about, you have a burning hell with eternal fire and brimstone. And when the fire come back from them now, them ball out. You know why you're not going to fire now? But examine the consciousness. Examine what you believe and what you know to be true. As the man said. The man never ever tell you. He keep referring to three wise men. But I get I I I can show him to that there's no mention of the Bible of any number of any man or men that went to visit Jesus. The Bible never tells you of no three wise men. Never. And in this time when everybody went to live out this illusion in December. If the greatest man on earth, no one know when him born. No man know we are in barn. Why should I believe that this man is not a mythology of the minds of people who want to believe the story? When I look into Africa, I see many mythologies and many stories like this. Many mythologies. When you tell a man about Brother Nancy, Brother Nancy is a Santa mythology about a spider. But if you ask a normal man out of the road, what do you think about Brother Nancy? You think it's a story? You think it's a real thing? He said, no man, that's a, a mythology that man. Folk tale. So why is a Nancy a folk tale and a snake talking in the garden not a folk tale? Why a snake can talk but a Nancy can't can you? For real. <laughs> it's a serious thing. How come an African 
snake, African and Nancy, spider, I should say, put it into perspective. Why is it that an African spider is a folk tale, but a Hebrew snake that talking is a reality? Put that into perspective for me personally. Because a Christian will live life on the block to tell you that this thing is real, a snake is a talk. Let me put him life on the block. Why is there a Santi stool in Ghana, the golden stool that represents the power and the might of the nation that came down out of heaven? Why is this a mythology, an African mythology? And the ark that people say is supposed to be in Ethiopia. When that evil Isle Selassie has ever seen, according to the history. Why is it that this is not a mythology? That anywhere the ark is represent the presence of God. So the, the, the Israelites walk up and down with this little box, claiming that this is representation of God. We examine all of these stories, and we come to the conclusion that every one of them mythology, and a mythology sometimes is a next man religion. <laughs> That's all it is. That means that your religion tells you that this is a next man mythology. In other words, if I come to tell you, say, Krishna, Krishna was born of a virgin. They say, no, no, not, no, it's only Jesus Christ is born of a virgin. But in that tradition, Krishna was born of a virgin. And Krishna was crucified and rose from the dead in the third day. This is a different tradition from the Hebrew tradition, from the Christian tradition, that have a same identical story. But we in Jamaica, who is clouded by colonization and colonialism, we will never examine other cultures outside of the colonial master's culture. So when the colonial master talk, we accept it. And we look and see that what the colonial master has taught us for 500 years, not working, it's not working for him, it's not working for us. And we are scared to go back to the root of our heritage, of our shanti, of our voodoo, of our yoruba, of our mahat, of our hamun, ra, metunetor. We are afraid to go back to these things because we were taught by the colonial masters that these things are devil things. Christians see with Hank, them say, no, devil thing, Hank, devil thing. You know, it's a weird thing. Weird thing. But more and more information is coming out. And as you gather information, your views must, must, must fit with the information. Because the information is only there to present to you the reality of things that you hold fast to in faith. Because faith is the absence of truth. Faith is the absence of reality. Faith is something that you believe and hope for. Because faith, according to Paul, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we hope and we have faith. But when we get the information, that is why superstition prevails all over the place amongst illiterate people. Because they all on pan superstitious beliefs that have no semblance of truth and reality in it. I was talking to a sister today and I tell her, I say, most one who used to believe in these stories, if them sit down in the house late one night and hear something in the house stop, them not think say somebody depend on the house stop or somebody drop, them think they are ghosts or a dopey. 
That is how their mind carry them. If them hear something outside, them not think there's somebody. Them think there's something. That is the craziness of what we call not examining things when information is presented to you. And it's only a foolish man. Only the fool, after getting this information and seeing that this information is reality, still hold on to faith. Faith is LRT, you know. Anyone can come. Your faith don't must wrong. When I say your faith wrong, we just say that if evidence can show that your faith is not a real situation, why are you holding on and that faith? Because it's enough Rasta get caught in that same Christian mindset too. Yes, enough Rasta. Because he has so much belief in the Eilis Lassie, some impossibilities, and then try to make Eilis Lassie become like a Jesus in a insight. So him, 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 him attribute so much craziness. Why you know the eyeless has to just disappear and eyeless, and these things is illusion. It's like him a re brainwash himself. Getting out of the Christian mindset and re brainwash himself again in a new Christian mindset. About eyeless lassie. But we know that eyeless lassie is real. The faith is important. Because every man must have faith. Every man must have faith. You can't live without faith. Because you have to work in faith. You cannot have work. Because your faith must... Your faith is the hope of the thing that you're working for. You understand? But you work. That's why your faith becomes real. And you examine your faith. And match it with reality. And you find, say, the reality must be more real than your faith. Because the, the reality is the, is the conclusion of all faith. Your reality is the conclusion of all faith. So one great master say, Follow the man who search for God, but hide from the man who say find him. This is the continent and RFM. Yes. Yes? Ah, uh, Muta. Yes. And uh, I realized that the man that made the speech a while ago, he not really put it in the we don't call the African historic perspective. No, he's a white man. You understand? He's a white man, you know. He's yeah, a, realize, someone, I, I, a I, Christian, you know. Eh. He's a bishop, Anglican bishop. He's not no. a man who don't believe that the Bible is not talking, you know. Okay. He's a bishop, he's an Anglican bishop who's speaking. But he was just trying to show you, say, if you take the Bible literal, you're going to get into confusion. You have to see it, not from a fundamentalist point of view, but from allegory. From a mythological point of view, examining the myth, examining the metaphors, and see how you can adapt it to your life. Rather than not saying why right now, yes, a woman who never have sex and pick me. You know that no makes sense, but you still accept it because it's in a little book in the Bible. You see, if you if you run the other cassette now. Which other cassette? The one, the black biblical facts, a life and times of Jesus Christ. Yes. By Barashango. Okay. The more in depth. We, we play that already. We play that already. Yes, and we play that a minute. We, we, we play for a minute. I don't minute. think you can play that too many times. I can't do level of brainwashing that. I mean, our people have yeah. gone under. I mean, this is why a lot of people that they might not hear it the first time. Yeah. But that's a very powerful message. Yeah. Barashango. I yeah. think he has a and he referred to you to, to books that's written by all these white people. You can't get of course, of, like of course. Jesus cruel and all. Well, the reason why I'm, I I play this brother, you know. Because I realize the Jamaican people have this feeling that if the thing comes from foreign and it's white, it is this more valid. That is why I, that is the only reason why I play it. Because but, me, me believe that it, when I analyze the whole thing, I recognize that the whole Christianity thing is an opium that makes you feel good, good, you know, produce it. It's a feel good thing, of course. <laughs> yes, this Thursday, the thirteenth that so called this uh, part two thousand yeah, one. Yes. So, yeah, man, from First week listening to the hype and showing this thing because so, so many of our people, because for years the eye motor mm -hmm. 
Dr. Joseph Ben Yochanan, I, Tony Martin, many conscious Africans yes. have been talking about these things, not for months, for many, many years. Yes, yes. And yet, because of the whitewashing, many of our people inside and outside of Jamaica as Africans don't believe. Mm -hmm. They only believe when a white person tells them. Yes, yes. And which is why it was so important for the unconscious ones. Right. To hear a white, yeah, a white man I say. Yeah, because I remember that book in the 1960s where we used to read by H. Rap Brown, Die Nigga Die. Mm -hmm. It he said, that time it was banned, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in it he said, the problem with Negroes, those are the unconscious Africans, is that their credibility gap. They only believe something when a white person tells them. Yes. And it is so, so still, sad. Still, still, still no. And, and and you see that point that they are made about faith and yeah. reality. reality. So true, mm -hmm. because while we must have faith, and Marcus Garvey talk about that also, mm -hmm. and, and so on, faith is no substitute for the truth. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And from the moment you know something is true. Yeah, the faith has become null and void. Exactly. Yes. But I, your faith is working towards reality. Exactly. So when you reach the reality, hope far, hope far. Yes. as you said. Yes. That's right. why that's why there's a saying now say if you meet Buddha and the way you kill him, meaning say boy right now, no, you find reality. What is the purpose of believing in the thing again? Exactly. You know, you know it now. Why you believe in it again? Unless you want to delude yourself this, forever ah, and ever. Ah, well, that is what black people in Exactly. Black people in a serious delusion, both religion and politics. And and you know, what, what, what is so sad, the most important thing in Marcus Garvey's whole doctrine of self-reliance is that key factor that some people wonder why Muta Baruka a lot of times on your program, you deal with the religious or the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. and so on. But is the core of Marcus Garvey's self-reliance philosophy that yes, we yes. have to see things through our, our own eyes, eyes and our own yes, image of course because once it start try to see through other people's which mm. is impossible mm -hmm. you will be in perpetual confusion and from your confused you will always be the slave of others who see things through their uh, own reality well i sure the question is asked why is muta as you say and i am saying to them that religion is the basis of our of everything impoverishedness yes religion is the basis of our mindset and religion is the basis of our not wanting to come out of that impoverishedness because religion tells us that we are right now it is easier for a camel to go to an eye of a nigga than a rich man to go to heaven exactly so everybody said well me no want rich me just want to have enough and black people never have enough because the whole world is mine Exactly. You know? So, 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 so we, lead, we lynch into that. And this is why so many of our people accept and believe that the slavery that our ancestors went through and the varying degrees to which we are affected by slavery this day is unimportant and that it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. Which is why I have been making notes motor and listeners. Because I'll be writing an article about Wilmot Perkins and the slavery question. Mm. Because it's not a new thing. You remember in the nineteen seventies the movie name wrote, mm -hmm. which we know they are in one many other yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote an article in the nineteen seventies, was about nineteen seventy seven. I have them thing in my archive. Attacking the movie wrote, saying, Why is it that we keep talking about slavery and like it was a good thing, you know, the so-called beneficial thing when I talk about. From them time they've been saying it. Mm -hmm. And I wrote in response. And it was even saying, oh, the Japanese don't deal with that. And I wrote a letter to the editor. In fact, I wrote it as an article, but Hector Winter put it as a letter to the editor rather than an article. Saying that the Japanese did not, no other race of people went through what we went through. What those territory was conquered and the kind of... Holocaust that we went through, etc., and so on. Mm -hmm. And I never hear Motty Man respond. Because, you know, anytime you catch him, him run away and think. Mm -hmm. And the, but the important thing is that we as conscious Africans motor, we cannot stop doing things 
like what you are doing here. So advance it, and uplift the people, never. Yes, because never. anyhow, we as conscious Africans stop doing this. Then no give we give up hope yeah. and condemn our people to perpetual slavery and ignorance. Because what is so sad when I listen to a lot of the radio programs in Jamaica, specifically right now, is how so many of our people is simply the brainwashing, the miseducation. Why them hate themselves as African people? Of you course. Know? Because deep down, when I examine... I have married up and really I tell people, say, it is a good thing that will come here as slave. Which is what Motti do, exactly. <laughs> and believe you me. And that him do? Yes. He might tell people, say, it's a good thing why people yes, bring yes, that slave. Uh, I would have their Africa sling pan, sling pan tree. Uh, yes, and you hear the lies when tell to. Because this is why... As, as your uh, program and other conscious Africans who do lectures and write books and so do, show, sure, is that people like Motty Perkins and so on do not know the truth about African history, you know. No. What them know about African history is what the white, white racist liars tell him, you know. But I, want to say, I never hear him quote an African writer yet. Never! Because as far as he's concerned, Dead. there is no Dead. civilized... No intellectual... No African... African that, intellect, yeah. That the only thing that any African can hope to be is to be an imitation of a Caucasian. Yeah. Or to be an assistant white man. <laughs> the only thing that we must be is to imitate white people. He has no confidence in himself as an African and he's consumed like many others, with self-hatred of the fact that the Creator created him, Moti, as an African. Mm. And I, I believe this is why he's an atheist. He says that all the while, you know, he's an atheist, you know. Mm. And he only judges things in terms of material. Mm. You know, progress civilization to him is strictly making machines that is progress. Industrialization. And it, exactly. And globalization. And, glo and globalization, as we know, is just another word for European supremacy. imperialism. White supremacy. White racist supremacy. Of course. White racist supremacy. And you, you know the Joe Motors, you know, him always refer to UWI Mona as the intellectual ghetto. Mm. But who created the intellectual ghetto but same English slave masters and colonialists? Mm. And the biggest intellectual, racist, dishonest, intellectual ghettos in the world are Oxford and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Yes. You will more than ever by itself. And, and the Rome. English will create Cambridge and, them, and Oxford and them, University where in view as the apex of learning. And them create and the Rhodes Scholarship. The original. And them create the Rhodes Scholarship. Who was this Rhodes? Yeah, exactly. Who was this Rhodes? Yes. Because I hear him knocking around it with saying, oh, around it with it, talk about reparations. What reparations? is big, we want big white people. Well, the Jews, them get reparations. Yeah. Reparations is not about begging. Reparations mm. is about we getting justice for our things. Mm. And as the Jews say, no statute of limitation runs against genocide. Mm. Which means that the, their descendants do have to do our people. Anything, anything personally, yes. but they have to pay for what their ancestors did. Mm -hmm. And if it is true, and it is true for the Jews and the Japanese and others, it is true for us too. Okay. I'm talking about because slavery in chains, in chains happened two, three, four hundred years ago. It's Time still, still is no. no excuse for the crime against humanity no, of but, our enslavement. But, um, Time do not wipe away rape. Rape is rape. Murder is murder. Of course. And, 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 and the, the, the destabilization and the underdevelopment of Africa can be traced to the European conquest of the Africa. But directly, but yeah. you know, check it now. A Wilmot Perkins would not want us to read Walter Rodney, who wrote the truthful book. Oh, Europe and oh, Europe Africa. underdeveloped Africa. You will never hear him want mm. mention that book. Well, maybe you don't know who named Ivan Van Sertima. But, but, maybe him know name John Henry Clark or Ben Yokiana. But, 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 but talking even before, guess who him don't even know about? Mm -hmm. Because him, Sir Tima and John Henry Clark get information about mm -hmm. the Jamaican, the African from Jamaica, 
J.E. Rogers, he was from Jamaica. Of course. J.E. Rogers. Yeah, the man don't know about them, man. Yeah, he don't know about them, man. The man who was a contemporary of Marcus. You know Garvey why You know lecture. why these things happen? Because we have never, even Marcus Garvey, in the 70s and the 60s, when I go to school, and we are talking about Marcus Garvey. Against some technical high yes. school. Yes. Yeah. These guys up at the university, the communists, them and man like what you are talking about, you know. Exactly. Never recognize Marcus Garvey as a political intellectual, you know. No. To, to, to them, Marx was yes. a political intellectual. Marx, Marx was the God. Yes, yeah. so, so when, so when we talk, yeah, yeah, when we talk about Marcus Garvey. with Abeng, Marx was the God. Yeah, when and we talk about Marcus Garvey. Marx lip service. Yeah. When we talk about Marcus Garvey, you know, he come like, say, well, that's not always, you know, I'm not, you know, political agenda. He's not an intellectual, yeah. not intelligent. But where is Marx's intellectual abilities now? Nowhere. Yes. Where is it now? And, and, and what these communist guys in the 60s at, the, at, at, at Mona never used to tell people is that Marx was also a racist. Of course. German Jew. German he was Jew. very upset when one of his daughters had a sexual relationship with an African from Cuba. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Them don't tell, them don't tell you that. When Paul Bogle revolted in the 1860s, 1865, if my memory serves me right, Marx was writing for the white capitalist, um, New York something paper in the city, and he made no mention. Carlos Moore, the African from Cuba, exposes this. No mention to say that that this even happened. Mm. Because to fit them view, you know, the only way that African people, whether they are capitalists, communists, or whatever, to these Europeans, the only way that African people can advance in life is through them. Yes. Uh, we must, we uh, can't think for ourselves as African mm. people. We must have white yeah. God, God, Godfather, our godmother to guide us along the way. It's the Albert Squire's mentality where Marcus Garvey Jr. used to talk about in the six yeah, that technical, yeah. you know. The, the paternalistic attitude. We can't think for ourselves. We always need some white person to show us the way, mm. to help us, well, to well, give well. us this and to give us that. Well, which is the man. very opposite of Marcus Garvey's philosophy. So when, so when I come here, that's when I come here now and I say, look here. We could re-examine the Bible doctrines. We could look upon it and see if it really makes sense. Exactly. And say, what are you talking about? Word of God, word of God. White guy come and show them. We could look upon it again and see if it makes sense. Man say, well, you know, it's true. And look how long. <laughs> look, how, look how many tapes. And look how many things that you and others have been saying about tapes, that. Tapes after tapes after tapes after tapes. Okay. But look. you see... Is it is 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 this is a self hatred and disrespect for themselves as African people that mm. they have yeah. that they cannot believe yeah. when an next African tell them no, you know, yeah. because and they I, don't believe in themselves. And you can't know something outside of the realms of white indoctrination. No. From 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 yeah. white people do a lie in it. Yeah, it's yeah. not true. It's not valid. It's it's a lie. Yeah. A white person has to come tell them, say, this yes, is man, it. it's good. You know, it even, it come into every area of life, you know. Look on all the appointment of um, the brother, the brown, as technical director. You know, some people are fight against it because deep down, they're not coming with it open. Them don't believe an African can be qualified to be technical director of Jamaica's football team. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, this is a white right. person, yes. Yeah, well, that's it is a self hatred, and fr- and we know this is a book that you have in your book chapter, the ISIS papers yeah. by Francis, Chris Dr. Francis Chris yeah. Wilson, yeah. and there's a chapter in it on black fear, and this applies to self hating Negroes like Wilmot Perkins and others who are so petrified of thinking anything different from what their white masters and mistresses tell them yeah. to think. And he said, we can't get through without the white masters and, and mistresses. E- e- exactly. And, and deli- you know, one of the lies I heard it, because I keep on listening to him, you know, you know, one of the lies he said why slavery was beneficial, he mm-hmm. said that African sisters who underwent female circumcision were speared that it was better for them to slavery here because they were speared certain so-called West African tribes, not nations, you know, mm. being his tribe. Mm. They were speared the ordeal <laughs> of female circumcision. Eh? Can, you, can, can, you, can you imagine that? Not only is it that is only some 
some African nations that do for female circumcision, but the vast majority, not that I agree with female circumcision, that's up to an individual, the vast majority of African people did not die because of female circumcision. There have been many practices in European history that are still European people. But you don't use that to say it is right for we as African people to enslave Europeans. Mm. Eh? Europeans have been practicing the ritual sacrifice, human sacrifice of people. The Druids, the original Gaelic um, priests and things, and, and Romans and things, used to sacrifice people to this day. Yeah. And all kind of depravities and so and so that Europeans practice. But we as Africans don't say that because them do them kind of wicked and negative things. Suppose them them. Say, we must enslave them and justify it. And civilize them. And civilize them. Mm. Eh? You, you, you see the dishonesty yeah. of yeah. people like him. More advertisement. Yes. More advertisement. Oh, yes, cut an edge. Motor B. Yeah, man. Yes. 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 Mandingo gone, hold on there, hold on there. Mandingo. Yes. Yes. Yeah, man, it's so come forward. Yeah, where's it now? Yeah, why is that, why is there not another second program like the cutting edge, Vinky? Well, I don't know, I don't have a radio stage that I should have many more like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to reply to um, what I have heard. One is I want to ask, uh, the, the Virgin is Christian, but did he express anything about um, any other traditions, um, i.e. Um, uh, anything of the Gita or so forth? No, when he mentioned, in, like, in the talk about the Shekhan thing, when he says really, uh, uh, he do agree with Shekhan, because he's saying at the East, people, when they greet one another, they class them on. Right. Like a prayer symbol in reverence and bow. Right. So he mentioned no, Indian tradition. Mm. But but he is a Christian. All right. Mm. My reply to it is that it is imperative for us to empower our thoughts in regard to our, our belief and doctrine. Mm -hmm. um, and as a religion, as we know it, is a means by which the greater order of the day, uh, from even Roman time, has implemented mm -hmm. to deal with a level of control of people. Mm -hmm. I mentioned something of Anansi, um, and that whole viability is that we need to look into our own traditions. Of course. You know, um, what we see is that um, allegory here becomes reality. So people can get a message to me, and what the tangibility is, they empower us and still at the same time control us. Um, religion is supposed to free us and give us spiritual liberation. But at the same time, when we came from Africa with our traditional belief, it was taken from us because that is where our strength lies and gave us what I call Palianity, our Christianity. But in regard to Krishna, which I I get a feedback. Um, but in, in regard to Krishna, um, you mentioned a little bit on Krishna, and I just want to um, give forth a few things that I have researched over the years. Krishna in the Gita means Christ, right? Krishna died at 33, so did Christ. Christ had a mother named Mary. Krishna had one called Mathura, which means Mary. Um, angels at birth, um, wise men, a star in the east. 18 years missing, all of these are par and par and the same. Mm -hmm. Yet the Gita predates the Bible. Yes. Do we not see that the Bible took it from the Gita mm -hmm. and other legends? So, creating the myth of the immaculateness or the immaculate conception goes through Gautama, Buddha, Mitra, Krishna, and other... All saviors of all nations. Exactly. Yes, sir, and several geomantic cultures all over the creation. Yes. 
So I am asking this individual, this person, um, Christianity in regards to all of this is really a copycat. Is it not true? Definitely. All right. So my input on the evening, I'll just leave that and just um, make a statement. We need to get to, to gain true change. Um, we have to approach hand in hand with internal harmony. Um, the elementary canal of the body is something that uh, we see as our internal body. We need to feed it spiritually first, but we also need to deal with our foods and the element of our foods. So I am asking my family to really deal with the natural elemental foods like piaba, watercress, English plantain, bamboo to clean the giants, watercress for lymphatics, gully bean for building blood and clean spring water and so forth, so forth, and bath fountain mineral spring, which is free. Um, the element here is that we have to keep educating our people internally and externally. Mm -hmm. And as I always put foot, I like Rima, they tell me one time, say, 17 years ago, what the eye is a raw food is. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like for that to be empowered by Latam and other people who you can bring on continually. Because if we don't really generate that element of healing on the inside from all of the misconceptions of um, mother's chicken and the rest of it, okay. then being it, we're not going to get nowhere by feeding people mm. the information you are giving on the outside. Yeah. Still, at the same time, I want to say, keep empowering my brethren. Yeah, man. And divine yeah. love, yeah? Give thanks. One love, mother. Yes. That's serious thing. When we see something in front of me. And I really want to talk to my Rasta bridge in them, you know. Because sometimes we talk on this program, and I say, hey, Muta, Muta come with some new Rasta doctrine. But well, watch a man. It's evolution, you know. It's evolution, it's information. It's clarity within information. So we need to go beyond where we believe because what I hear a Rasta man say, boy, I may not believe nothing, I may know. And you see what I know, it's the same thing where the Christian believes. <laughs> it's a thing. And though I believe, same belief too, you know. Cutting edge. Yeah, Mota. Isis. Greetings, man. Highly. What I'm going to tell you that man there is really, uh, I say something, you see? Mm -hmm. Because we still have to keep on referring, referring to what you have said. The same thing you that talk about. All along, I have one center. All of them, they are about the same thing. Mm. And as we know that Jamaica people, you know, always peer audience to white people mm -hmm. argument and black people argument. Mm -hmm. Well, dealing with the, the, the Jesus thing now, why my own proof of saying why me fire about the Jesus. Because we within, because we remember the Jesus is coming at the Hebrew system. Right? Well, Jesus really coming at the... Greek system, you know, because it's not the Hebrew system. Yeah, yes, no, no, no. But what I'm going to say now, there, there, no, we know that Jesus is, is a Greek, but to the Bible really show it and to them believe it, they must say, a Hebrew. But what I'm saying now, within that time that this man Jesus was walking upon the earth, right, out of the Hebrew tradition, now the shall go there, they must say Jesus is a Hebrew. Mm -hmm. right, eh? Yeah, they them say that, yeah. Yes. So what I'm saying now, within the, the alphabetical harder, at that time of the Hebrew, there was no J. Mm -hmm. So if there was no J in the alphabetical heart. That was his name before. Uh, yeah, in the, the, the Hebrew. How come we have the name Jesus? The J does come in. Uh, the J. It's just 500 years the J come in. The J is the last letter to be placed in the alphabet. Yeah. Now, all the people who go to school don't know that. True, true. The J, all the teachers don't know that. Yeah. That the J is the last letter. To be placed in the alphabet, which have 26 letters. Yes. So, if there was a man 500 years before the J, yeah, go in the alphabet, and if you spell his name J E S U S, what was his name before? Before that J was there. Yes. Because we know the origin of the word Jesus coming from Greek mythology. Yeah. yeah. You know, see, so 
You have to examine these things. Yeah, yeah. People don't want to examine it because they're scared. Yeah, it's true, yeah. They're scared say it's about interrupt huh? and intercept. The whole life belief. Yes. You know see? They don't want to rock no boat. Yeah, because, because even Sunday, there was a woman and, uh, and they were in Africa, you know? We with Andrea was um, dealing with so, uh, the African philosophy and, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, and thing there, you know? Mm. So, so, me, so me asked about some questions. I said, the only t- we are motor can we really go into our African tradition and and root ourselves. We have to come out of this Jesus mentality, this Greek Roman system. Because once we remain the, into this Greek Roman system, we will never to have ourselves open and free yeah. to accept our, our African teaching yes, because yeah. what, whatever you are saying and all the other brethren and sisters are saying about Africa it will never take root Mm-mm. because the, the man in the church the, the, the church leaders the, the past them would get him $36,000 a month to, to tell you all of these lies and, and hypocrisy they keep on doing this thing and, yeah. and this thing and, and, and another thing again what, what are them are with the people you see, you see this kid business no matter about children kid the what? Yeah, I call a goat. Do, uh, the kid? Yeah, I call mm. children kid. Mm, okay. I, I don't go to I don't have kid. Mm. Because I remember as a boy, they used to call woman fowl, you know, because you used to look a chick. Chick? Yeah, now go to woman look a chick down the road there, you know. Mm. So, did them no, kids... No, I a beef. And look, look a beef, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but I remember beef down the road, you know. Yeah. Pure meat business and the yeah. thing, you know. So, you see, what, what, what I'm really saying now, you see, we have to get our mind, you know, on a level vibes. Yeah. Where, where we can uh, we know, we know, where we can really begin to really teach our children the truth because within this Christianity this system mm. we'll never hear what we you are, are doing and many are doing it will just look like it's just all in vain yeah, and, uh, thing, you know, so, so the first thing we have to say that even as Rasta man it's in Jamaica and, and around the world what I think we should do is those who have getting money you see mm. they should start to set up a, a thing you know, where we can um, teach you know, the, 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 the true teaching of, uh, of the African thing. Yeah. Like, like the Muslims set up in yeah, but I will leave a rest of free the African thing too, you know. Eh? I will leave a rest of free for type of African thing. You know? <laughs> it's true, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. And no rest of get hooking at the Judeo Christian thinking that if you start telling about Yoruba and Voodoo and yeah, that you, uh, Uba, Akan yeah. and, yeah. you know, Dogan yeah. and him say, oh, no, some of them things. Yeah. I'm afraid. Yeah, it's true, Rasta. I'm afraid. So, 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 so I said, no, Rasta, see, I'm call the Muslims set up them thing, and the Jews set up them thing, and the Indian and all those people set up them thing. That is why I said the Indian can I uh, was just a strong talk, you know. Mm. And then Chinese and, 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 the, and, the, and the Muslims, because what? Them come together and them set up them school, them set up them factory, them set up the them local store where we eat to one thing. Mm. But as we Africans, we don't really check up that principle. We're not going to tell about that. Yeah, we want Tommy Ilfiga and McDonald's. Yeah? We want Tommy Ilfiga and McDonald's. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking that, you know? I, I, I have to go back to, to, to the naturalist, you know? Yeah, all right, Reggie. Yes, yeah, so a guy that moves and yeah. take care. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's a serious, serious thing. How scared we are. In just understanding reality. And the entire reality, you, you shun it. We want to tell the people them that Latham, Iris, Iris, the sun food man, is having a winter salt taste December the 20th to the 22nd. If you want more information about it, 944-8209. To those of you still with us, this hours. Yes, continue. Yeah, greetings, and I'm okay. I do. Yes, I don't have love, you know. Yeah, man, that's the far I keep your eyes trying to call, you know. True. Yeah, man. I said, give thanks to the sun where you're black at this hour, you know. Yes. Yeah, what you don't know, say, Jesus had a new world order, I'm a sh**. You know? yeah, see, because Babylon don't set up them ecosystems to control the people already. You see, for uh, uh, repatriation to Africa is the black people only help. You know, see, mm-hmm. uh, see, Allah and Jesus are fighting you now. Uh, Allah will get subdued. Because Allah now has the ecological infrastructure like Jesus. You see? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and George Bush has spearheaded the Jesus regime. The proof, yes. Yeah, for the Pope. Mm-hmm. You know, see, because they've done, see, say, you know, Jesus in the Allah country and Allah gets vexed and lock up Jesus and Jesus say, yeah, hey, a war. Mm-hmm. You know, see? So right now the whole world of us subdue on a GSR because Marcus Yavi tell the people in a long time, 
say if you don't have an ecosystem for yourself, and you're both under the white supremacy ecosystem, all in time you want to believe you still have to go to see your regime. Yeah, of course. Because I'm a feed you. Yes. And when you lack of food, you know you're hungry, because you don't have something for your ecosystem upliftment, you know what I mean? Mm. So a man go depend upon Tamil figure and Nike here, and you know, business, but for your own development, you know, my fat now next man development. Right, because you can't get it easy. Ah, That's why them call it fast. Really you know? you see? That's why them call it fast. You can't yes, get it fast. Quick. Everything fast. Fast, so. yes. Fast, yes. Thing, yes. You know, it's, a quick, it's a quick business, probably, and even ahead of time right now. Yes, so I you don't have no so. need to do nothing for yourself again. They must ah, do it for you. Is it? Mm. So you, you, you become now dependent upon them for everything. Puppet and a string. Ah, is it? Mm. So when my husband have to tell them them to self reliance, you know. They never know, so they get hook for a system, you know, for a like handout system. Because black people love handout, you know, free issue. Yeah. And look like freeness, I go and see them bungle up today, you know what I Yeah. They don't want to work and set a standard for themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? Because, see, they know, you know, you know the, the system build up, they know that a man, you know, I work hard over the years for all a vehicle and he just get ready. The thing so when that redemption come and off repartition and all of that. Mm. You see, that's why it's so much free gear we are giving out so much for that for business and Babylon and Adio. Be a pretty person in your eyes and be a catcher. Mm. But you give more than me, man, nothing about redemption and Africa upliftment. No, 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 no. No, no, no they get hooked at the Jesus system. Yeah, and then they start to show you like the Africa one backward place and... You can see it. Design and the people so... Love the forwardness as kind of them, but them claim says forwardness. You yeah, see it? Yeah. They know I'm going to the backwardness for them, so they know. No, no. So it's an illusion, then get this out, you see it? Yeah. And fever yeah. lessons for them own personal development because you can't do it for yourself, you know. You, know. you have to go into the white man system. You know, you have to go get in, in knowledge, you know, if you go strengthen in, in industry. Because you know, have no industry for yourself. Mm -hmm. You see, so you have to go to fiend school, get in knowledge. And then we're working on, in fact, you know, uh, establish fame business. Mm -hmm. While in Sudan, because fame big ten, you know, I say, all right, you're doing a good job, son. Yes, yes, you know, yes, when you're yes. done work, you know, I'm all the years I say everything. They say, okay, I'm tired of you, you know, I'll get a new worker. Yes. And you get some pension, you know, give time for your services. Yeah. And that's all you get, a good yes, pension, yes. is it? I, I get a pat over the shoulder. Do you see it? Yeah. So you find that the system, Virgin, is not in a pretty car, it's in a time to come where we're coming now. And I'll jog with regime, you know. Because when time blind, I go in the election, you know. Tweet. From poor people, don't you? Mm. Mm. Remember me tell you that you because when you start... You start already? Or you start giving winnings already? They don't you know, say you don't have no very man because I prophesy that no man. I prophesy you no know, man says devil has got run over here, you know. Mm. And you don't say, eh, hey, name DK, Duncan can hand over as the biggest PMP member, you know. Mm. You see, he can't declare against the <laughs> against PMP. And you need to work with Pete, with, with, with him. It's blind and I call him a show of PMP as the wickedest part of the world. Mm. And now you know the JLP kill the most. You see it? Mm. So, the, so the BBC come, you know, and call, show what the world say. PMP there, um, and Adams, the man. I suck at the people, them. Um, and see, I got jump on it like a, a crusade for himself, you see it? I can't do the polls, they don't say Adams is well liked by the people. Ah. Sure. The majority of people they like Adam, so all yeah. that work out now. See, that's why I call it because I want to between Adam and Adam. Mm. Yeah, because two, you see, two of them I get dead shit on, and I sit in my mm. child, two of them are big friends working together. <laughs> and I can the people. Like, you know, like Bush and Ben Laden. Ah, you get the meditation. <laughs> <Just, laughs> no people don't know what's going on. Yeah. Thing, you can't just imagine. Yeah. If them capture Ben Laden now, and him go on a court now. Yeah. The amount of things where Ben Laden have attacked. <laughs> you see what I say? How much CIA help him do this, and how much CIA help him? And give him power to do this. Mm. And give him gun and mission to do that. May I tell you? Yeah, I'm just like all the popes and Castro Cromwell have gone contact with um, capitalists to yeah. divide the people of the world and confuse their meditation mm. Mm. because it's all about divide and rule mm. it's all about you can't have the set of people on one side mm. and the government on one side there's a rebellion yeah. it's yeah. all about split them in a two and confuse them yeah. that they can't rise against it mm. you see yeah, it's so it's it. yeah so you don't see it. yeah it's a judgment setting up on black people because they're going to take up the wrong you know doctrine the wrong governmental orders yes. You know, the wrong, wrong religion. religion life. Wrong religion. Wrong religion, wrong, is it? Yeah. So yeah. you find, say, it a backfire upon the whole of them right now, because mm -hmm. if they're in school, they don't care, get no work, because no infrastructure is set. 
why man done the system of stuff a certain amount of people because you know, have to kill out certain amount to rule the masses. Because mm. you know, Africa might kill out people with AIDS and all kind of stuff because you want to control Africa to your Z. The politician will get you, the church man will get the you. The church man. man will get you. Mm. You see it. And if the politician and the church don't get you, then corruption will hold you. Mm. You see it. So mm. either fast food or yes. some fast sex or some, yes. you know, it. Yeah. all kind of corruption, AIDS. you know. AIDS. Yes, you see it? Help you. Yes, you see it? Yes, you see it? So, you know, we don't know that Jesus again has been shared the new Lord and Bush are telling about, you think, you really hear them talk about God bless America, you know? Mm. I want to know God them talk about, you know? Mm. You see, we are just bumping people over there, so they know, and after the masses, they're not like sanctioned from people, they're so, you see it? Yeah, God bless so, America, man. You see it? So, I'll them much for that, you know? Mm. Come and don't see the family, man, then go. For, for, for all of them kidnapped for eight Jesus, you know, before the bombing go on the world tower there, you know. Mm. You know, see, they find that Jesus six. Well, you know what they say, two months ago it was 5,000 people dead in it. Two ah. months after 3,000. Yeah, this is it. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of them are telling me. Very important enough you know, to find out what is happening. Yeah. Anyway, we have more bridges. Don't give thanks to the blessings till I want black people to rise up and, you know, see it rise up because Ethiopia or Africa awaits its creator, you see it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, man, one perfect love, you know? Yeah. Yes, Mota, the evil forces not try to cut the communication before we conclude. Man, bingo, man. No, you didn't on the line still, you know? Eh, eh? We put you and the virgin together. Okay, okay. Uh, but, uh, bl- love the point where I touch about a lot of Rasta afraid to step outside of the same yes. Judah Christian thinking. thinking yeah. Because it is so true because if you mention anything like about the Yoruba, mm. as they I say, now, they voodoo, are gone. And voodoo. And voodoo. Yes. Voodoo. I mean, you even hear them make some record about mm. voodoo this and, and they don't know that voodoo is coming from the fan language from West Africa, mm. which are our same people. Mm. Which is a word for the creator mm. from the fan language, F O N. But our people have been so whitewashed that evil, some of them who are supposed to be conscious yeah. because of that. Oh so God. nothing is. Them don't even know, say, the first man to lead the Haitian Revolution was Bookman, who was an African from Jamaica, and he was a voodoo high priest. Yeah, that is how he win it. And that is how he win it. Mm. So oh, you see here now, and that's me I say now, you see, Rasta Bridge in them now, yeah. them ah, under the influence, the talk, yeah. them under the influence, you know, but yes. there's something about reading the Bible that tell you, say, if, if the Bible not tell you that, you know, but there's something that when you read the Bible to know, hardcore level, it's like you don't want uh, to come out of it to search nothing else. Yes. So you have some Rasta now. Him so into the Bible that if you show him a next book, not interested. He's not interested in it. Uh, but but Mota, but let me even check the word Bible. What a lot of people don't know that the word Bible there's a place in Lower Kimit where them no call as so called Egypt, named Biblos, the marshland where they read because we know say our commission our. So got Egyptian um, ancestors and things made the first book mm. from Papyrus. the papyrus, you know, papyrus which yeah. grew in a in a, in a the Delta region mm. of Lower Egypt or Lower Kinet. That's in the South. Exactly. Me and Andrea and Tony Rebel, I had a safari traveling on a papyrus boat across Lake Tanya. E- exactly. Yeah. And see, and that is where the word paper come from. Mm. So when we hear uh, some guys that are about like Moti and others that are about things, yeah, and how yeah, we invent yeah. paper, the word paper come from papyrus. Mm. As we grew it first and as we made the first paper. Mm. The word, the word, the Bible, book come from, is from Bible, a place in a lower kinet. Mm. So book and paper mm. is I and I, the African, yeah. who originate that. Yeah, and the Bible is just a, a compilation of not many books. It's not one book. Because no, they was written in different periods of history. But but not only that. You know, it's not just one man sit down to no inspiration or several it's man sit down. Inspiration. And, and sit down. It's politics. Exactly. It's politics. And make up and make up different versions. Different versions. Story. 
And when, and when all you read from the 101 contradictions and things, they more have to kill you. Yeah. You yeah. see? But, but you're the joke now. Realize, say, you know, the world in which we live today. All of them guys who make up them different version of the Bible could have and should have been sued for plagiarism because thieves them thieves other people's story. Culture. Mm. Mm. It's thief, them thief, well, other people's We never story. copyright nothing now with that yeah, Exactly. Mm. So, and I pray they copyright thing, them gone to prison, you know. <laughs> a thief, them thief, people's story, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's a crime. Of course. See? But you don't know, say, uh, tomorrow, even right now, uh, tomorrow when uh, some of them here when no know thing. Say, what a thing, Mouton, man, thing, what a boat, boat, say, the man, the thief, people story. No, mm. the unwillingness to accept the truth. Well, look, you know, when I saw the program, we were talking about Moses. Yes. Moses, I, I saw into the Bible. Thing. Moses, I saw into the Bible. Spent 40 years in a fear of policy. That means that everything where Moses know for 40 years was taught by fear and him friend them and the universities where they did. In other words, we Africans teach Moses. And then when Moses come out at the palace mm. and go in at the wilderness, he meet the next man and marry to an Ethiopian. You know. Another African again. And spent 40 years again. So at 80 years old, you know, he still a learn from Ethiopian. And he might learn from Egyptian. He might learn from the African race. Yeah, there All is, the way. There is nothing in that no. Moses introduced to the Israelites that never existed in Egypt and Ethiopia. Nothing. In a, he's be the African teach yeah. Moses. Even the Ten Commandments. He teach it from 42 to the Came out of Egypt. And all the people don't want to know that, you know. Because no. he don't want to know about Osiris. He don't want to know about Horus. Yes. He don't want to know about Set. I don't want to know about Mahat. I don't want to know about the Hank. I don't want to know about Amun Ra. I don't want to know about all of these things because these things is but, but, Egyptian but it, mythology. But you know what to them now? The Hank, you know, is a devil symbol. Of but course. the cross is not a devil symbol. Yeah, the cross is a symbol of suffering and shame. And I must wear down No way. Mm -hmm. I now wear not rep represent the symbol of suffering mm -hmm. and shame. And the Hank, which is this life. The key of life. Yes. Oh, life. oh devil, devil symbol. Don't, don't, don't do that. Eh? Well, I full up it. I have one over my shop. <laughs> but, 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 but me see it, and when I say it is a good thing that a bookshop like the I exists in Jamaica. Mm. Because to get books like the ISIS papers, the destruction of black civilization yeah. by Chancellor William, raised first by Tony Martin, the philosophy and opinion, oh, the um, civilization or barbarism by Cheek and Tadia. Yeah. We sure say the Europeans, them uncivilized. Well, you know what, you know what, you know what, yeah. African origin of civilization. If it was with some people like Moti and others, you know, them books, they burn and do exist, you know. Yeah, but wait, no. Mm. I am wondering, how them giving you all of these things, citations and things, and, and never, you know, they mention J.A. E. Rogers. Exactly. Never, never, you know, the contribution of J.A. E. Rogers to it, black history. Is the original. You know, I listen as he did give him... A, 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 a medal. He was, he was at Selassie's coronation. Yeah, and, and him, him referred to Island Selassie as a perfect man, you know. Him. Yeah. When I book, um, where book them name again? Um, so many. You have six. Great, no. Great men of color. Great men of color. Volume 100. And 100 facts. He mentioned mm. Island Selassie as the perfect man. Mm. G.A. E. Rogers was a Jamaican who, when man never did even talk about black history writing. Even did I write it, I'm going to document it. Exactly. So how oh, come you never hear none of them guys? None of them. Because this is, why, this is why earlier when we mentioned another program, when even people are talking about Sir T, man, others and so, Rogers is the original man. Mm -hmm. Because Joel A. Rogers from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And not only that too, Marcus Garvey and him were contemporaries. Yes. And he used to lecture at Marcus Garvey's meetings to the UNIA and ACL in the States. Mm -hmm. And... And Dubai, that jealous enemy of Marcus Garvey, wrote and said that no living man has ever unearthed so many facts about the yeah. African race yeah, than J.A. Yeah. Rogers. Yeah. 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 And that is Dubai. And, and, and he admit, said no other living man 
And how many Africans from Jamaica no. know that such a man no, is no, an African no. from GAE? No, only for one don't know. Only for you don't know. And and if and, and if it was to the mind of the slaves then, where they are, the the the, 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 the slave mentality of people who there who think say it's just Europe count and who praise up the intellectual racist mm. ghettos of Cambridge and Oxford. We would never know about GAE Rogers and we would not have access to the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey yeah. and them thing there. Because oh. them thing there we're talking the truth and showing that we, we Africa that. yes. Mm. You know, I mean one of the most ridiculous I mean it's so ridiculous but we have to deal with it still. This is talk about if Europeans never did come Africa four or five hundred years ago and conquer and thing. We wouldn't did have civilization. All over Africa, in a so called Nigeria we have had the knock civilization. So many civilizations all over that were destroyed by European conquest. African, the African world was more civilized before. Exactly. European. And you know, we have European travelers. There was, I think, a Dutch traveler who wrote and said that when he went to Benin in West Africa in about the 15th century or thereabouts, or 16th century, that he found well-developed cities Proper hygiene, roads, etc., etc. Proper houses, not a hot sand, them thing mm. there, you know. And this is a European. Man, and, you, and, and, but them, but them don't, but, but Moti and others don't want people to know that. Virgin, you want to go to Bordeaux, man. Bordeaux is in France. Yes. When the French was living under what we call European ideas, yes. it was not very civilized, as yes. history shows. A set of people named the Moors. Yes. Bill France. Bill Spain. But the first Bill university is in Sp the first university that Europe ever had was by the Moors. Yeah. So when we, go, when we go to Bardo, mm. and we see the streets and the buildings in Bardo, and they will tell you that is Africans design these buildings. Africans build them. And it is Europe. When we go and we say that the first bath, the first street light, mm -hmm. all of these things, is Africans carry them there. Exactly. You know, so, when a man tell you, say, is if it was white people, exactly. slavery wouldn't be civilized. See? He must examine what is it that causes us to be uncivilized in this time. If Precisely. it is not the same white supremacist, European colonialism, imperialism, that still exists in the minds of the people. Which is what books like The Destruction of Black Civilization and by Chancellor Williams and Dr. Walter Rodney's book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, shows precisely how this was done. Yes. You see? But them do not want people to read these books because, you know, the truth is an offense. Yeah. And, maybe they don't know them books. Yeah. But you're yeah, talking about hygiene. Queen Victoria of the British Empire boasted that she had two or three parts for the year. year, you know. Yeah. And that was a big thing. Mm. The Europe, where the matter about, in the 15th and 16th century, was a place where when them lived in a land and places like that, when them perform them nightly functions, you know, um, urine, mm. etc. and yeah. stuff, them used to get rid of it by chewing it from people walking in the, in the street below. That's why they didn't have a plague. That's black why they have all kind of plague. They didn't have a black Nasty plague that kill off 70 percent of European population. Was wiped out. Yeah, so it's so people who never have no proper hygiene and gazing in Europe in, 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 in the 15th, 16th century and all of them things there were rarities. Mm. Because in fact, they thought that if you beat too much, it was a bad thing. Well, really, I will mention time and time again. And, and, and most of them are worse than me and you tell life and them, you know, because you and I can show them European books written by Europeans but we, who no, document we, 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 this nastiness. We are there. Because we're ready for them, because we, we have the facts and the books. I mentioned time and time again mm. that when the Moors yes. in Spain, mm -hmm. they have a tradition of having a bath more than one time a day. Yes, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. When in Europe, when these Europeans see these black people bathing twice per day, you know, they were reported to the authorities. Yes, so, that this was a wrong thing that they, they were They were involved 
in witchcraft. Yes, to be bearded so much To time. be bearded twice per day. Yes. This is not what me saying. This is history. This history is written like that. Written, written that by, man written getting by a European. problem written for by being, European. This is a problem for get. He getting a problem for being twice per day in Europe. And it's not because they were short of water. No. But because there's a superstitiousness about having a bath twice per day. Because some of them have bath twice per year. Exactly. Be a ignorant. Yes. And they have come to about I and I, the African. So the African race. Eh? When we look at what is taking place with Africa now. It is in direct relationship to colonialism. It exactly. has nothing to do with our relationship with Europeans. Exactly. Why we not exactly. advance? Yes. Exactly. What, what the, the, and that, the, the, the negativities in Africa like that are based on European imperialism that destroyed what we had originally. That yes. was progressive. Was progressing too. It was progressing. Pro and progressive. Science and technology. It was progressing. E e exactly. And then some guys come and just destroy it. Destroy that deliberately. And no, tell him say, we And then I come to about say, we must grateful. Eh? Grateful for the rape oh, of our ancestors. Man, the mass me. murder of our ancestors. Then tell me something. You, you know, when me have a laugh, when me hear um, the, the, the idiot talk about the, 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 our sisters were glad to be speared from female circumcision. So why is it, since slavery was so good and were glad to be speared from female circumcision, why is it that African women threw themselves into the Atlantic to be devoured by the sharks rather than live in slavery. Why is it that African women in the Caribbean and in the States killed their newborn mm. at birth rather than make them children grow up into slavery if slavery was so beneficial? And of course to Moti and others. Sam Sharp was like, like I listen to Moti Love man. <laughs> no, 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 you see, hey, you know why? You know why? Three years not document people like yeah. that. Because you see, in our in our war, yeah. we have to study and document our enemies. So when them try to say a lie we are tell mm. from them. We have them documented, man. Yeah. Everything we say, them can't refuse to them say it, man. Mm. Cause we have to expose. Because you know, when we know the right thing, mm. if we are silent, that means that we even worse. Yeah. And we have to deal with them case and thing. Mm. And and this is the importance of your program where you doing here. Because and not just to the eye as the eye you know, mm. is to enlighten our people. Because your program is hated by those who want to keep African people in slavery, mm. both physical and mental. Because programs like this enlighten our people and burst the mental chains that chain our people. And this is why we can't stop support the eye. And for no say from our well, I know why you stop. No, no, never, man. And for no say from our school days at Kingston Technical High School and Nova Street, mm. that from we imbibed the doctrine of Marcus Messiah Giavi. Well, we have never wavered. Never. Because once we know the truth, yes. you cannot depart yeah, yeah, from man. the truth. The worst thing is to know the truth mm. and to try to depart from it. Yeah. Because those who know better Do have better. to know better. And we can't afford to deal with fear. Because if we deal with fear, that means that we will trap not only ourselves, but our future, which oh, is our children good. and their children, into good. slavery. We can't deal with that because that's the next thing when I'm using it. Well, you know, free to say them things there. Mm -hmm. No, but, but, but that is a tactic to keep with in perpetual servitude. I'm afraid for those say them things there. I'm afraid for those say that, yes. I'm afraid for those say it. Exactly. I'm afraid to say it. I'm afraid for those say it. See? We have to, we have to, we have to deal with things like that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, no matter one thing we certain of motor, no matter how, them try to hold the African race in subjection, in, in, in servitude. We will eventually triumph as a people. I have no doubt where that is concerned. Mm -hmm. We definitely will overcome in the Marcus Messiah Giavi way. Mm -hmm. Because we will never stop as African people from bursting all chains that them try to shackle us with. And one of the things that I noticed also by these, the, the brainwash um, ones in GA, the brainwash ones from our race, is that any time we talk about having any African unity with Africans from the other islands of the Caribbean or Africa, it's a big problem. 
is a big problem. And then I notice, when some of them do, you ever notice sometime we are African or black, and the next time we make up a mixture of all kind of race whenever it suits them. Mm. So, on one level, when I, when I hear them say, oh, we are talking about Africa for. Um, we are not African. We are not, you know, we are not black and them things. We, we, we make up a European, Chinese, Indian and all kind of thing. And the very same people who say that, hypocrites who say that, you see, not the next spread, no matter about the, we are not that. Why, we tell you, you know, black people not good, you know, not no black not good, you know, you see them nigger them. Mm. It's the same people, you know. Yeah. So, them want to have them cake and eat it. So, how can it be that one moment, we are African, and we're black and we're not good, and the next moment, we're not African, but we make up all different races, the so-called out of many wait, one people. Wait, 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 them get you see the conscience? Where did them get out of many ones? From? The people, them people from the states, um, man. America, the, Latin matter, the, the, the Latin matter where the states, them talk. America, them get yes, out of many ones. Yes, them teeth, them teeth, that. I will, if I jump yet, I don't even know, say. Them not know that. The out of many ones is the same matter in America, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's teeth, them teeth, it's from America. It's teeth, them teeth, it. So, you, you, you don't mind sharp all America the melody? America would have sued them. Of course. The teeth in them matter. Yeah, of course. See? You it's tell some, uh, some teachers don't even know that. Them not know that. Some because teachers they don't of even know that. Like Ricardo Woods, who originated Black History Month, said the miseducation of the Negro. Yeah, them in need of teaching themselves. If you go to some school and say, look here, you see the motto of Jamaica out of many one, it is an American motto that Perfect. was stolen by our so-called founding fathers from those people in America. Exactly. It has nothing to do with the Jamaican reality. Nothing at all. It was just taken from America and transported and transplanted in Jamaica out of many ones. Yeah. But here they can. The reason why them teeth it from America, they use it just you know, is because the so-called people who were in charge of our so-called independence were very anti-African mm. and them wanted to con the majority, we know the population of Jamaica majority of the population of Jamaica is African. They wanted to take the African people's mind of Jamaica after the fact that we as a people must control our resources, etc. and so, and try to fool us with some so-called out of many one thing, you know. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Check on mind of Africa. Oh, no, no, African. Yeah. But that is the con. Mm -hmm. See? But there is no way that can be because anyone who comes to Jamaica from abroad, from them come Jamaica and look around for the population. You see that you are in an African country. Mm. And we say that without apology, all you have to do is look. We know if you go Ghana, Nigeria, and Jamaica, for example, if the people don't talk, mm. you don't know where you're there because it's just the accents different, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're like, we're like, we're going to Europe. Exactly. We're going to Europe, the only time people know so we come from Jamaica. It's when you talk. It's where we start to cause bad You don't know say where about Trinidad, yes, sir. Yeah, Trinidad, Africa. Nigeria thing. No matter where you come from. No matter where, where you come you from, you're African. Just say, you know say you're African. So this mm. is why when uh, some of them read the people there, I try to brainwash people at all, but we are not African. Who them are fool? And you, you know what I like to be the one them who them look black, the rose spread fruit then. But at all, but say, but we are mixtures of all kind of thing. Mm. Me personally would have delivered them free of charge to a Ku Klux mob meeting mm. in the States mm. or a national front meeting mm. in England and then we know say if them is mixed draft what? <laughs> no man, that is that no Buddha said, don't worry man, oh you're not African, you're not black. You're a mixture. You're a mixture of European mm. Chinese and Af not for the, you know, you're a mixture mm. out of many one. Okay. You can see what mixture you make out of. Mm. And me, me and you just mm. left them at a Ku Klux meeting in the States, or left them at a national front meeting, or, or the front meeting in our France with the boy the Le Pen, and then we'll know what mixture of race them come from. Let me tell you something. Trying to fool them, trying to fool themselves and other people. Them Both are, them no African. Them have an advertisement on the TV right now because of the World Trade Center thing. Mm. Where you hear some people come and say, I am an American. I'm going to say, I am an American. American was a white guy, American. No, we, no, 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 we don't have say. We don't have to say. No, listen. We don't have to say. We don't have to say that. They might try to be patriotic, you know, by yes. saying, all these different people is American. Mm. 
So it's the out of many one thing you know, them are manifesting you know. mm. Because now them are sure you say the Chinese man who is in America, the this in America. But well, you're the black man now in America. Mm. The black man in America call himself an African American. Yes. That means you know, you're not telling him. He's an American, you know. Mm. He said he is just an African American. Yes. He said I'm say he is an African in America, you know. Which is what he's supposed to be. Yeah, he said he's an African American. That means he him become less of the thing that him proposed to be, you know. Mm. Because if a man says he's an African American, you know, mm. the most important thing in that thing is the American. Yes, of course. You know, see? If you say he's a Chinese American, the most important thing that is American. Exactly. You know, see? It? So him become now something other than himself. He right become a hyphen, hyphen hyphenated. Yeah, him is an, him is become, he may become almost like the subject rather than the object. <laughs> like then he's no subject, then he's no hyphenate himself. Mm. I cut him, cut himself into yeah. you know. yeah. See? You, you, can, you can't be an African-American. You have to be an African in America. Yeah. Hmm? Like how oh, we are African language in funny, Jamaica. Like, uh, language funny because the man who bring up that now. You see, he might try to show you himself as being an American, you know. Exactly. But he wants to distinguish himself from the white man in America. Exactly. 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 Mm. Yeah, that means say the subject and the object. Mm. Yeah, he is an African born in America. Yes. But him say he is an African American now. Sure, you say the American is the most important. Yeah, yeah it's the most important part of the change. You know. Precisely. And Muta, as we know, we are simply African. Definitely. Because nationality have nothing to do with this. Wherever we are, no matter where we're born on the planet, but want to when the, want to, change. Want to when the, 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 the so-called Native American decides uh, a theme country, which and is, which, back in yeah, land. Yeah, 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 which is theme country. But, and the back in land. Where, yeah. where, where this African-American going to do? Yes. Because the buffaloes will let them side with the white man who will oppress them and kill them. Precisely. Kill the, kill the Native Pre American. Kill, yeah, over them own land. Yes. Over them own land. So how that go? You know where that remind me of? The West India Regiment on here, where did go Africa and used by the British for murder Africans in West Africa for British imperialism. The West India Regiment. Eh? Africans who go as members of the West India Regiment and fight wars in West Africa on behalf of the British races mm. against them own people. Eh? That can't work. And the other day, you play a tape there. And don't stop playing the tape there. But the Illuminati, you see the boy Thomas Jefferson, man. Me I tell you. Again, me I mentioned him just to the last time. All the while, he's always been mentioned as the, the, the guy who write the American Constitution. All men are created free, equal, and thing and thing. The boy Thomas Jefferson. And as we know, he was one of the biggest slave plantation owners, a rapist, oh, oh you, you, we can't the same time, a rapist, a torturer, and a member of the Illuminati, Thomas Jefferson, right? And then he's always been healed as this champion of freedom of people by none other than fear, multi persons, you know. No, no, you see me? Hey, Muta, between me and you, you see, till the rest, me man dingo the guy here. Yeah, you love Muta. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, love Muta, man. Uh, no, you no, mentioned no, Muta about 50 times. No, no, you want to know. Yeah. You see, for the rest, I will not Muta Perkins' life mm. as an arch enemy of the African race mm. worldwide. Mm. For the rest of his life, I man dingo the African. The Gaviai will never, it's my sacred duty to expose and attack mm -hmm. in an intelligent way all such people like Moti yeah. and people like him. If I did not do that, I would not be living mm -hmm. to my true mission in life. No, as sorry, I have to so much time to him name still. Eh? I understand what you have to do so much time you mention him yeah, here, you know? But, but I won't mention him here again for now, but I just want people to know for the rest of his life, Muta, <laughs> and all others like him, man. Yeah. Any, any, any enemy of the African race yeah. is the enemy 
of I Mandingo the yeah. Yard. You have to move now. Yeah. So Aye. keep on keeping on. Yeah, man. And it is good that your bookshop is there. Yeah. And that bookshop will make other bookshops come in a, all of the other parishes and so on. Yeah. Because the information, the important thing is that the information is there. Yeah. And our people who don't want to be shackled in mental slavery, them do have no excuse. Mm. The books are there to liberate themselves. Because them same books say, I and I read as youths in the 60s at like Kingston Technical. Yeah. And them time they when we not read it, them did ban, Man, them yeah. the government did catch we. It was like ganja. We would have go to prison. It was like ganja. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We would have go to prison. So therefore, all Malcolm X out of every city, them can't read it now, them not have to go to prison and them thing then. Yeah. Them have no excuse <laughs> for being free from yeah. mental slavery. And yeah. you know, if I'm free from mental slavery, is total freedom in every aspect. Right, so time. one God, one aim, and one mm. destiny. I mean, I go and listen to the program. You don't know anything. Yeah, the man. very end, and you know, so me for the eye more time. Aye. One African unity. Yeah. Every time. Aye. Every time. Cut it. Hello. Hello. Good night. Good night. Um, I I I was just listening to the man that called in, right? Who was speaking a lot about you know Africanness, mm. which I really embrace totally. However, I have a concern that sometimes African is mentioned, it's as if there is total acceptability on the part of African. And I just wanted to comment on that. For example, in the summers in the United States, and my uncle, I, I believe totally in um, repatriation, I might add. But is, do you think at this point that Africa is accepting to receive those of the, the, the people of the Pan-African uh, that's the African diaspora then. And my other concern too is that there is so much uh, cultural differences within the African continent itself, per se. For example, I must add before saying anything else that I've never been to Africa, but I plan to go there next summer, right? But there are differences. For example, I was reading um, Politics in Contemporary African Societies, and it was saying that Africa have over 700 languages. So there are many... More than that. Well, thanks. Now you're informing me of more. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, but there are so many cultural differences in terms of religious, in terms yeah. of religious ethnic groups, and various cleavages, language differences. And I'm afraid that a lot of times people speak of Africa as if it's one continent of yeah. much homogeneity. Three different countries. All right, but I explain something to you, sister. Mm -hmm. You see, when it comes on to development mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah. White people don't have no problem of taking themselves from France and Germany and thing and go to Africa to set up business. To exploit it, of course. Yeah. Well, you see, we know we have the problem of saying what you just said by saying, well, there's so much different languages. How we're going to fit into that society. Right. No, you look here. You have business opportunities in Africa that we don't tap into, that we need to tap into. You know. For instance, now, Ghana. Mm -hmm. When you go to Ghana, well, I think a good thing about Ghana is that when you go to Ghana, you don't have to learn another language. Because the people that talk in the same way like how the Jamaican people talk. And Ghana has a stable society right now, one of the more stable of the societies in Africa. There's a lot of investment opportunities there that we don't know about because we're not having any business news report about what is taking place in Ghana. Okay. Now, you have, for instance, you know, like South Africa. And I talk about places that I have been to. Okay. South Africa is, I mean, from Cape Town to Johannesburg, it's two hours flight. Okay. And no, say the flight from here to Miami, one hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. So you must know, say, it's, it's large. a large yeah. place. Because no. I mean, a friend of mine who, who's been to Africa was saying that, boy, you know, Africa, how it is shown on the globe, yeah. it's much bigger than the United States. Why is it that the geographic Yeah, but you say you have 52, so 53, all right, Fahrenheit and the Cameroon, there's mm -hmm. 250 different languages. You know, the Cameroon alone, you know. Okay. But the thing about Cameroon is that it divided into English and French. Mm -hmm. Like in Yonde, which is the capital, it talks French. And if you go up more north, them talk English. So what we need to understand, you know, is the political, social structure of Africa before we even can say, make a move to deal with certain. We can't just go there like, Romanticize the thing. Right. I because, don't find that that is what is happening. Yeah, happening. I worry about people. We, we hear that, you know, we hear that. That's how people are romanticize it. But that don't mean, say, that we here cannot find spaces 
in Africa that can sustain our understanding of life and also help to develop their understanding of life. Right. You know, see, we need to find that niche. Because there's so much things happening in Africa, you know. There's so much people going into Africa to set up business, development, and, and that is not black people. Yeah. We is scared, so scared that we're not going to know the language. Maybe them religion different. Maybe them food different. Of course, them food different. Of course, them language different. But more, I tell you, if you walk in the streets of Dakar in Senegal, the youngest youth where you find on the street attack three different languages. Because yeah. when they see you, they see you as a tourist, and they say, here you talk English, they talk English. La French is the main language, and then they have the Mandingo language, where they call Wolof. Wolof. Okay. All right, so in talking Wolof, which is the indigenous language, in talking French, which is the colonial language of Senegal, and in talking English, which is the tourist language of Senegal. Yeah. You only talk English, go there. So when you go there, you feel say you can't fit in to certain things. But the youth on the street, I have that experience. I was surprised that most youth on the street in Senegal are three different languages in my talk. Mm -hmm. And now you don't feel why well, you can't go there, go fit into it because it's mostly French. Yeah. But we're wrong if you study French. Nothing is wrong with that. You know, see, we should have started to learn French more because most of the French speaking countries, I mean, no more Rasta bridge in them, were vexed with me when we said this. But you see me personally, right now, would I prefer to learn French than Amharic? Because even though Amharic is an Ethiopian language, but it's only spoken in, in, in Ethiopia, you can't communicate with Amharic outside of, Af of, of Ethiopia. Context, yeah. So it makes sense. To me, it makes more sense to me to go learn French. Yeah. Because most are North Africa, and most are Central Africa, and even West Africa speak French. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I would have to suggest that, yeah, we know, we hear about these people, we know some them culture are different, but then no, it's easier for we to fit into right. that it's culture. That culture Don't go to Germany, go try to fit into a German culture. It's right. a serious thing. Yeah. But I think, though, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be said more. Yeah, I think the I, problem I, where you have I'm is really the romanticizing of it. Right, I'm yeah. really tired of it. And I mean, a lot of people talk. You know, Muta, but is there going to be a concerted effort to ensure that the development of Africa is actually done? I mean, look at the, the issue with the reparation yeah. of um, the reparation, the conference the yeah. other day in South Africa. Yeah. What is the people of the Caribbean? What is CARICOM saying to us? I know that Hillary Beckles was there, but I mean, the feeling that I get is that in terms of reparation and paying back mm -hmm. the, the the black race for yeah. what they have lost, I'm not talking about monetarily yeah. only. I'm yeah. talking about setting up skill training centers yeah, yeah, yeah. and educational facilities. Well, what I think most people social capital. I don't see that our regional leaders. No, well, the regional leaders is Europeanized, you know. Them not. See, them don't see a South South dialogue or go on. Them say the same. If it's, if that is why I went to. But it's Africa. like neocolonialism then, because there's course. no progress. That is why when something happens in America, we feel it, so you know. Because we keep looking to America for a salvation. Not just America, Europe in general. Yeah, well, America, no, because America is, you know, yeah. is what you call a superpower now. Yeah. So, there was a time when we looked to England, because the banana boat is about England and everything. Mm. Now, you know, Miami and, you know, New York and things. So, there's, there's a tendency now to want to go to America. We only want to go to England if we didn't have a long time parents there. Yeah. But now, most ones that want to have an American visa than to go to Europe. You know, see, yeah. but we have never read, turn our eyes to the south, which is really Africa. You see, because we get, it's either, I can tell you what, what the problem I have with our party. One, it's either we see Africa so negative that we don't want to deal with it, or we romanticize Africa so much. So much, there needs to be that we don't, we, 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 we don't want to deal with it either. Right. You understand? So we need to get out a little religion. Yeah. You know, drink milk or only when you go to Africa. We need to get out that out of our mind. Yeah, we need to get out that yeah. and recognize that it's no accident that Haiti and <laughs> and Africa seem to have, or uh, you know, fact in terms of fact, have so much AIDS cases. Yeah, the most know? the most AIDS cases in Africa, you know, South Africa right now, third tree. Is that serious thing? You know, millions right. of people are dead in Africa. Yeah, of AIDS, and yeah. I mean, you know, the sad thing is when you look at how 
the, the men in this country have been socialized in terms of sexual prowess that it is okay for them to go sleep with this woman and sleep mm. with that man. It's like destroying themselves. Okay. What they use to define them, their early manhood, is what destroys them later on because they cannot take care of their children. Yes. And so their children are destroyed. Yes, yes. I, I mean, agree with you. I really appreciate the program because, I mean, it, it talks about conscious things, yeah. which, which, we lack, which we really lack. But you know what, Muta, I'm really tired of being in a country mm. where people just are drop dead like flies, so, mm -hmm. and we just have a culture, talk, talk, and when it comes to action, you know, nothing is done. Mm -hmm. it, it's just really sickening. Well, you see, it's something not doing, but it's that more people that do it. <laughs> something really I do, but it's just that more people need to do the same thing, to cheer, make the cheer and stay, you know? They say, like Africa. We might feel that nobody now go Africa go to not. There's enough people, enough black people have go Africa go develop certain things. But you're not hearing about it because, yeah. you know, you have to go for all internet now yeah. to get real information. Yeah. It can't, it can't depend now upon the newspapers in your country. Right. You know, that is the beauty about internet. Yeah. That the information, the information. is so wide now. Mm -hmm. But you just log on and you... You, you, you pick up newspaper in Africa, in a Europe, in a Australia, all these places, you know. Yeah. You are no more confined to just the green and the observer, yeah. you know. Mm. So we need to that. Give thanks to the call still, you know. Yeah, man. Take it easy. I did. All right. Yeah, man. Sister is very concerned, and we love that concern. Yes, cutting edge coming through. Cutting edge. Yes, motor. Yes. Oh, thanks, man. I'm there. Yeah, um, that, that thing here is uh, really interesting to find out from that. Did you not listen to the tape? Well, it's not so much the tape. No, I'm going to ask if you didn't listen to the tape. Yes, yeah. No, but that's an ask if you yes. didn't hear the tape. Uh, I, I take it in, you know? Okay. But, um... Long time in a year for you, though. Well, still around. Mm. It's just that I have to get up early in the morning, so I can't hardly, yeah. you know? You know, it's a holiday, you know, I can't but I know why you don't call still, you know. Yeah. It's well, the last time you I know why you don't call, it's to come off of the Jesus thinking. Yeah. See how wild, eh? You don't call. It's to go off of the Jesus thinking. Yeah, you know. so you kind of ring me again. Ah, <laughs> So, anyway, uh, you know, when we really want to find out, when you have say, um, Eli Selassie is real, you know, exactly what you mean. Like that. you. Eh? Like you. Real. Like you. Well, if you really like Omino oh, say you exist now. Yeah. You're talking up on the phone. Yeah. That is real. So, um you know, could I give me a little more explanation because No, you don't know why somebody says something real. Yes. Real it's, it's like oh you there on the phone now. A living thing there. Me know say you exist. You're yes. real. You say to me, God is an experience. Yes. That means that God is only real to the man who experiences God. Uh -huh. You can't tell me that God exists if I don't experience that. So in what way you experience the emperor now? No, I never tell you I experience the emperor. I experience the emperor because I know him real, like oh you depend on the phone and all. Yes. It is not a matter of I experience in Irish Latin. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. You're asking about real. What I mean when I say Irish Latin is real. Yeah. And I say Irish Latin is real, just like oh you depend on the phone now, and I know say. It's not a dopey attack to me. But is a man. But, you know, there's a whole lot of illusion to, as far as I'm concerned, that is associated with the whole belief in... Ah, yes, Lassie. Yes. You know, you may just attack them a while ago. You know, you may just attack them a while ago. You know, I, I was but, just tackling them a while ago. Yeah. You never hear me? I, I hear you. Okay. But at the same time, mm. I'm wanting to bridge and them hear you. But what you mean? know what I'm saying? Let me hear my man. And if you are eating to them, hear me. you hear me and them not hear me. It's a long time you have waged a campaign <laughs> this whole idea of the Christian belief. And and Rasta thinking too. Don't forget. But it's not on, it's not on a Christian belief attack. Attack also some of the beliefs of a Rasta brethren. Uh, say for instance, you succeed. You have to give me that credit, man. No, so say for instance, you succeed in eliminating them. Yeah? Now, what would you replace them with? Replace what with? The belief in Christianity and uh, and the belief in Replace? Religion. Replace? No, I mean, you have to have something to believe in, you know. Yeah, we you know, say no. Yes. But, but you believe in that thing until the point yeah. where you realize that belief and reality and substantiating reality yeah. is more evident of be than believing in something. That is what belief. 
belief is to the point where you don't know. So when you know, belief take a back seat. But sometimes the information that you confirm your belief with, you know, is questionable to you. Know? All right. So the, all right. So all right. I know. Say you have a man named Ailes Lassie. Yes. But I know. Still alive. No, wait, no. I know. Yeah. Say Ailes Lassie was the emperor of Ethiopia. Yeah. I don't believe that. No. I believe that there was a man named Jesus. Yes. That is what the Christians believe. Yeah. No, I believe, said Jesus, born of a virgin. And you I believe, believe that? Yeah, wait now. I tell you what the Christian them oh, say. Okay, okay. The Christian them believe, say, this man born of a virgin. The Christian them believe, say, him walk for water. The Christian them believe, say, feed five ton people tree. If them don't know that, no. When you use intelligence, yeah. information, and come to conclusion, you realize that it is just it must stay in a belief. You cannot impose that belief as knowledge uh -huh. and a set of people or a group of people. You must make that belief sustain you and yourself. Don't try to impose it on people. And anytime you start to impose belief yeah. from people, then you're going to have a problem. Then what is wrong with belief? I never said, yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> I never said nothing wrong with belief. Yeah. Every man believes in something. You know what you were saying? That? You know what you mean? Another virgin at all? Yes. But, you know, sometimes, you know. If I never said something is wrong with belief. Yeah. Something is wrong with belief when the truth and the reality is facing you. And you still hold on to a belief that does not correspond with the truth and the reality. That is what is wrong with belief. Well, the truth is. Would you say the emperor was a Christian? Of course. Yes. So, you know, it, uh, sometimes... So what happened to that? <laughs> well, I don't understand, you know. Yeah, you revere this, this emperor. Mm. And he was a Christian? Yes. So what is wrong with that? Uh, well, what I'm saying, you know, if you really respect... Jesus emperor, Christ was not Christian? Eh? Jesus Christ was not Christian? Yeah, but he never tell anybody to worship him. No, I never said tell nobody that. I have said Jesus Christ was not Christian. Yes. I can yes. understand that. Yes. Uh -huh. But at the same Christian. time, the, the, the whole idea of Christianity is built up around the word that was uttered from his mouth. But you don't know that. Eh? That is why you believe. Well, yeah, because you, you don't know, know that Jesus said these things. Have you ever studied words? No. Study whose work? The, the word in quotations that in the Bible. No, man. The quotations in the Bible was put there by men who believe. Well, there's no... Know. There's no the, book. Make a lot of sense. No, there's no book in the Bible that Jesus wrote. Yes. Every man who write about Jesus. These words that were written here. down there. None of the man them who write about Jesus did ever know him, did ever see him yet, I never did evil you know, come cross the, 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 the faith is the, is the word, you know, the word is still there, you know, because. Brethren. The, you, you, the word. Brethren. Live, uh -huh. None of the men them yeah. who wrote about Jesus did ever see him. Didn't know him. You know, a lot of, a lot of, of brethren that. sing about Emperor Yale Selassie. I've never seen him. But them know them exist. <laughs> and you have books where him himself writes. That's where people write about him. But. No, listen. Yeah. You have books by Yale Selassie. You have tape recorder in a Yale Selassie time. You have film in a Yale Selassie time. Yeah. That means a man can stand up in front of Yale Selassie when he make a speech and tape him and come back complete. And you know. So this is Ilyas last words. The words in the Bible that is ascribed to Jesus. Yeah. No one know that there was a man who named Jesus. So what thing. has Emperor Ilyas Selassie done to deserve this sort of reverence? He don't have to deserve nothing. Uh -huh. It's I healing him up. Oh. You don't have to heal him, you know. It's I heal him. I have said to you that yeah. I know Ilyas Selassie. I have heard. I have seen Ilyas Selassie. With my own eyes. Uh -huh. I have heard him speak. I know that there is a man uh -huh. named Eilis Lassie. You don't know that there was a man named Jesus. You believe that. And the words in the Bible that is ascribed to Jesus Christ. So you you don't now, know. Are you saying that Eilis Selassie himself was misled into believing into these words? Because... It, it, I don't he was inspired a great deal by the, 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 the Bible. But, that but the know. Bible is inspiring. The Bible inspires a whole generation and generation. I don't have no problem with that. Yes. The Quran inspires a whole of people. 
The bag of Vita is fire all for people. I think your problem don't in the motor. As far as Christianity is concerned. I do have no problem. What a pro- you know what my problem is? Yeah. My problem is when you have a belief and a faith. Yeah. And you try to put it by me and say, this is how it goes historically. That is my problem. No, no, you see, the European version, you see, <laughs> Ethiopia was the first Christian nation, do you know? So what that mean? Uh-huh. What that mean? Ethiopia. So what that mean? I'm saying that if there was no value to Christianity, there was I no never said moral there's no, or spiritual value. I never said there's no value to it. Yes. There must be a value to it if one billion people accept it. Yes. I never said there's no value. I mean, you actually find it reprehensible? Yes. Because it's it, it enslaving black people in for what 500 way? years. In what way? It's not, it's in not, what way? You don't see it. Us, you know, because the religion is, that we have been feeding on, you know, is really our history, you know. Which history? Huh? Which history? The whole idea of the, this written word coming down from one generation, from one century, from one... I don't mind that. Huh? I don't mind that. What do you mean? No, man. The, 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 Nile run from, the Nile run from the highlands of Ethiopia down to the lowlands of Egypt, you know? So what that mean? I am saying... So what that, that mean? The, 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 the you know why your man make movie about place, but some city? Huh? You know why your man make movie about Batman? You think Batman never in our city? You, you, you don't say them call the name of streets yes. in New York to show you that Batman exists. Well, I'm don't you know that win. Superman? I'm right of a win mingling. No, um, but it's the same thing with, with the Bible. Man, you call in places that exist. Yeah. And because people them call the place that exist, you're saying the thing must happen. That no, don't make no sense. This is a real thing. Yeah, because... but Superman exists. Huh? Superman exists. No, you're, you're the Superman will fly over the Statue of Liberty. Now, no, 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 let's not confuse what... No, it's not... No, it's the same, it's the same the thing. Of, All you do, you think of a story and put it in a place that is real. You think of a story, you put the thing in a place that is no, real. The There's the no bread and Nancy. Time, you know. But bread and Nancy is a, is a fancy spider. Huh? There's no bread and Nancy. <laughs> oh, no, man, get real. <laughs> of course, I'm getting real. I am getting real. Like, because yeah. you people want me to believe yes. that a Jewish snake was talking to a woman. Uh-huh. And you people want me to believe that a man hold up a rod. A Jewish snake. Then I'm not a Jewish snake. I couldn't handle that snake. But because a Jewish story. Who is a Jew? Who is a Jew? Yeah. You tell me why. But there are a whole lot of Ethiopians who are Jew, you know. No, they become Jew. No, 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 no. They become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people become Jew. They don't become. Yeah, but, but you make it seem like it's a racial thing. No, I is an Ethiopian first. I can't be an Ethiopian and not be a Jew. And what the emperor himself was a Jew, do you know? Who said that? No, it's you, he hear, a, you ever hear the Isle of Selassie mention himself as a Jew? His emperor, Isle of Selassie, was the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Mm-hmm. Does it so, have to be a Jew? No, sir. Eh? No, sir. No? No, 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 sir. No, so, no, no, no. so this whole idea of, of um, giving himself this title of the conquering life who of the tribe of Judah. I know I have to give himself a title eh? Eh? The title is a tradition of Ethiopia. Eh? It's not I just have to give himself a title. You have to be a member of the tribe of Judah to become the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Yeah, Judah. I am saying to you. Uh-huh. You say I just have to give himself that title. Yeah. I am saying to you that I just have to did not give himself but, that title. But that title is a tradition of Ethiopia. In that book open. I was reading earlier with Leonard Mosley, Elias Selassie, the conquering line yeah, of Judah. I read it too. Huh? I read it too. Yes, but I'm saying that um, yeah. to be a, a, a member of the, of the, uh, the, the tribe of Judah. You have to be from that lineage. Yes. Yeah, so what happened? So are you, I'm saying that then he must have been a Jew then. No. Who is a Jew? Because... Who is a Jew? A Jew is really a person who believes in the whole, the whole testament, you know, the, the whole laws of Moses and, and build up a whole bunch of rituals and things around it, you know. Look here. Uh-huh. It's like how you have Falasha. Yeah. Falasha, you can't go to Ethiopia and call the people them Falasha, you know. Uh-huh. Falasha is like you are called a man coolly. Yeah. It is not accepted. We but he's is an Ethiopian Jew. No, it's Beta Israelite. Them calling it Beta Israel. Oh. All right, so you know, it's a falasha. So, you know, this, 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 this is what I'm saying. This whole idea of Judaism no, is Vietnam. a European heritage, you know, because... Judaism is... Judaism. Yeah. I am saying to you, I is Rasta now. Yeah. And I tell you about Islet Lati. I don't know where Islet Lati is. I don't know where I am in relationship to Islet Lati. What? Don't tell me about where Islet Lati is. Now. Tell what me about my benefit? relationship with Islet Lati. As an individual, yes. what you benefit? What are the benefits 
for believing. For calling yourself a Rastafarian. What is my benefit? Yeah, what what are the benefits? You what you really want me to tell you that? Yeah man. Why? Because you say Because what difference to... making your life wait, what difference making your life when I tell you that? Huh? That, that suppose I see I see this thing as you know, real You try to make me out into a cool theater? You try to make me out into a cool theater? I am yeah. not a cool theater. No, no, no. You have to explain the belief. You Look call here. yourself a real I have to explain yeah. it. Uh -huh. For why? You're going to put me in, you're going to behead me? No, man. So, why do you say I have to explain it? I don't have to explain nothing to you. No, I mean, if you're going to. You, you, you use a Christian, don't you? You use a Christian, don't you? Huh? Don't you use a Christian? No, I'm a Israelite, you know. You're not a Christian. But I, I have. No, I ask you, you're a Christian? I say I'm a Israelite. All right, so you're not a Christian then? Nobody's born a Christian. The, oh, gosh, man. Nobody's born a Muslim. Nobody I ba born I Christian. Nobody's born nothing. You don't have a born being a heterosexual neither. So, what happened? So I'm saying that I'm an Israelite first, and if there's a religious label I have to associate myself with, I would gladly... All right, you are Israelite. All right, you are Israelite. Yes. I am not an Israelite. Well, you see, that's, a, right? that's another party, not... No, I you, you're just I'm trying to show you, I am not trying yes, to convert you. I am not trying yes, to convert you to Rasta. For the black man I am not Indian. trying to convert you to Rasta. No, I, so I don't have to explain to you why I am a Rasta, no, because you, know, you cannot religion, kill me for being a Rasta. Religion. I mean, you can't just sing a song, you know, and recite a poem and think that people should, uh, you know, should accept what? that. It's an no, I never tell you. No, wait there, wait there. None of my poems, them, is preaching, you know. My poems is expressing what I feel about situations in the society. I'm not preaching to nobody and say, why well, you're happy here, Ja, or it's lightning and thunder will kill you. I have never yeah. written a poem like that. Yeah. I have never written a poem saying, if a man no heal Ja, lightning will kill him. And if a man no praise Rastafari, or dead. I have never written a poem like that. But whole of All of my poems is written on the basis that this is a condition that I am seeing and it's what I'm writing about. Yeah. I don't write to convert people. No, 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 there must be some reasonable explanation to life, don't you think so? Some re what is the reasonable explanation to life? No, if I say, explain to me, what are the benefits of being a Rastafari? Yeah, but, you can, yeah, but it, that is what only people always call me to Rasta. No, man. I must explain to I you why the be what is the benefit. What are the benefits? What what does it benefit you? To be a Christian. If it benefits me to be a Rasta. Well, you see, the thing is. I, I don't. I'm not trying to convert you. No, I'm not. You think I come on the radio to convert people to Rasta? No, I don't come here to convert people to no Rasta. What I'm saying, you see, if if you ask me as a Christian, then what? As a religious belief, not as a... Yeah, what uh, is the benefit of What are Christian? the benefits? You will say it. Yes. But I am saying I am then no obligation to, to defend why I'm a rasta to you. No, I wouldn't to, be, to me, you know, personally. Is you are talking to, I'm not talking to, you are talking to. You know, if you it, ask me the question, I am not... There are other people who are out there thinking that this whole idea of being a rasta fine, leave one without some kind of hope. Yeah, just you know? like just like any other Christian. Yeah. I will if a Christian, I will if a people believe, say... Christianity lead them without hope. How about people believe the Muslim lead them without hope? No, a Christian could never believe that Christianity um, is, is a hopeless thing. Mm. Even in this life or the other. But I am saying that there must be some kind of hope. The, 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 You're right, there is not a hope. You're not listening to the program, you know. The salvation, then. You're not listening to the You believe that there is some form of salvation. Salvation for what? Huh? Salvation for what? Now let's 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 let, 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 let's get to the human. Salvation for what? I am saying. What am I being salvation about? The fact that we are not just mere flesh you now. No, tell me what are you telling me? What yes. is the meaning of salvation? Some kind of hope beyond this. But I am so hopeful in many things. Uh -huh. But what are you calling about salvation? What do you mean when you say salvation? I am saying. Some kind of hope beyond what? Why you keep for one, about two years, or you're coming to me with this thing? You're not, why are you trying to convert me? No, I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not you trying to convert you, you know. You are like an Israelite? Just yes. keep on being an Israelite. I tell you guys, a Rasta. I am saying, if, uh, I don't have to explain, you don't have to explain to me why you're Israelite, you know. As a Israelite. I never explained, I never asked you. Yeah. It's the funny time you are telling me, say, you're Israelite. Yeah. I never asked you to explain what benefits it, you know. I do him to, you do it to no obligation to me uh -huh. to explain why he's an Israelite. But Mota, you have taken it up on your head, you know. 
to act to what? The weird, a relentless campaign. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I have seen people what the believe. Christian faith yeah. is doing to the mind of the people. But no. What is your faith doing to your mind? My mind? Yeah. You don't see. My faith is waking up to the realization that this thing is not working for black I people. I hear you condemning Christianity, but you're not putting forward reasonable explanation. Why are condemning it? Even. Why are condemning it? Yeah. And I put it up forward no explanation. So all the time you listen to me, you don't hear no explanation. You don't hear me saying that these people has perpetuated a mythology and make who it become a history. Who are these people? The people who give me the story. The story that that snake attacked a woman in a yard literally. You know, it was only recently, you know. It was only recently. The Europeans uh, dismissed a great deal of superstition and, and ignorance. And I'm mm. going to tell you this. When Christianity was introduced into Europe, they associated with a whole lot of their pagan ways and paganism and, and um, all superstitious ways. You know, they associated in order to find Christianity acceptable. The Europeans associate their own little uh, idiosyncrasies to Christianity. Yeah, like, okay. a man, like, like, a, like a woman not having sex and having a child. Yeah, those are uh, myths that are associated with a particular group Yeah, well, of people. what you must do now, you must go and tell the Christians yeah. that these things are mythology. No, no, no. No, Christianity itself is not a mythology. No, listen it to me. It is based on facts. What is the fact that a woman, that a woman is a never have. What is the fact that a man born. Of the man who spoke or died two thousand years ago. He never come to say? It's irrele ir irrelevant. It doesn't matter how it came. It doesn't matter to me. But them but it, it not matter to you. I find much comfort but it, no, words, words, it, it no matter, 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 matter to you, you know. Yes. But it matter to a million of people because if them did ever tell the people them say Mary was a normal woman. I have said. Yeah. The glorification of Jesus Christ <laughs> would diminish. It would diminish because the basis of Christian belief yeah. is that this man came of a virgin, died on a cross, and raised from the dead. That is the basis of Christian belief. And if you start to tell the people them that this man did come normal and dead and never raised from the dead, then your faith is... Who based Christianity on that type of belief? Every, really, every Christian but that I talk himself, to... Did Christ himself be a... Little. His Religion is Christ. Yeah, listen to me. Yeah, every Christian that I have spoken to in my life uh -huh. believe that Jesus Christ, born from a woman who never have sex, dead from a cross, and raised from the dead, and gone to heaven. Every Christian that I talk to believe no, you that. Talk, you talk to church attendance. No, I say, no, you're talking to church. So you don't want to Christian. That. Huh? You don't know no Christian who believe that. I know a lot of church attendants who believe no, that. No, I say, and you don't know no Christian. Their, their Listen to me now, man. I ask you. Religion. You don't know no Christian who believe that. Huh? You don't know no Christian who believe that. I've never known a Christian that be believe. Uh, you don't know no Christian who believe that Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, dead upon the cross, and, and raised from the dead. I know, I know, um, <laughs> Pentecostals, and I know, uh, um, Roman Catholics and Protestants and all whole lot of those type of people. And the man of Christian. Well, you know. You're a pious brother, you. Eh? You're a pious man. No, no, you're no. You're self righteous. In what way? Because here's you now. Yeah. I am telling you that I know a whole heap of Christian. No, you know a lot of church attendance. So, them is not Christian then? Go on in the title, Christian. So people who believe this is not Christian. The pre people who believe who, who are a Christian are those that believe in Christ Himself. Yeah, I am saying. Yeah. That is people. Yeah, what I'm yeah. People who believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, died on a cross, and raised from the dead uh -huh. physically. These people are not Christians. No. All right. All right. No. All right. Because Next subject. I would say the Hemphrey Next subject, a man. You know, say the Hemphrey is a Christian. Next subject. <laughs> Next subject. Yeah, yeah. Well, Can you know, ask me, or, or you come double up a question where you may answer yeah. way down the line already? You ask me already about the Empire, and I'm going to tell you yes. Yeah. So you ask me it again. No, I'm just saying Mister, that. Mr. Next type subject. Of that I am is, Next is subject. The type that the was. Next subject. <laughs> Next anyway, subject. Um, because he's pious and he's self righteous. Why? 
Because you is telling me that these people believe that it's not Christian. But you are defending them now and earlier before. I'm not defending them. I said that is what. I'm telling them how. I'm not defending them. Hey, oh, the man of God likes the man now, not saying so, that's that. I am trying to show you what the Christian believe. And revelation, they are still hanging on to it. And you know, what I'm saying, your perception of the truth is, does not necessarily correspond with what is morally and spiritually truthful, you know. But I wasn't trying to identify my moralistic ways with yours, uh, either by people one. Well, you know... I know you cook food, I don't, and I try to impose it on you. Well, you know, I mean, it, it, regardless I don't have no shoes, I'm not trying to tell you how to wear shoes. But, you know, I mean, every man has a right to live in his own life. Yeah, but not that, may I try to show you, brethren? But so I why you try to impose Jesus from me far? Mother, why you try to impose you Jesus from me far? subject of Christianity, and whenever you start waging a, a war against it... You didn't hear Mr. Spang? You didn't hear Spang? You didn't hear that, the, the Bishop Spang? That man in himself, um, he's a European. I'm talking about Jews. Yeah, I know that you asked if you didn't hear him. As if the Jews is a race unto himself. Come on. Unto themselves. You come like an artist, don't ask you. Yeah, I he, heard him. I heard you him. heard him. That doesn't mean anything. You don't call him. He's not a Christian to you. Yeah? He's not a Christian. In his own way, I suppose, he have, um, what is there, like a, um... Time don't believe there was a virgin birth. Mingling Christianity with errors and falsehood. Mm. not necessarily. Make it right, you know. Why come? Why you not? You have a church? Huh? You have a church? My church, you yeah. see, mm. is the word of Christ. Yes. I got him building church, and you know. Mm. Who building church, buddy? Christ himself, mm. and the little rock, that mm. little word. Yeah. You know, it, it, the, the Messiah. You own anything? It you own anything? You own anything? Huh? You own anything? Like what? House, car, telephone, radio. You own anything? There are certain little things that oh, oh. you could associate personal belonging. Oh, okay. Them. But I'm saying that... Them said Jesus Christ never won nothing. As a matter of fact, him say he mustn't even take certain things from people when you go preach the gospel. So. It's because you don't understand... I mean, I understand it. ...the idea of mm -hmm. him coming 2,000 yeah. years ago. Your it, interpretation. It, it, was, it was not to own anything. You mean I don't understand your interpretation? No. Listen, go back into his word and read it before you can... Oof a word. Yeah? Oof a word. The word. The Bible. The word I've tried to. man with good understanding. Mm. If the hemper Which part of the man work? Which part of your work? Wisdom, eh? Where you work? I don't really work, you know. You don't work? No. Hey. So all your worship? You know, you have to worship. Worship, it's work is worship to me. No, no, I don't worship in, in that You don't, way. work no, is I'm worship. A, 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 as a man. You, so you don't, you don't earn money a week time, month time, yearly? Of course, I have to find somewhere. To so where you do? So you don't work, so where you get more? You teach people, you rob people then? Now and what to that extent. So, um, so you don't work and you not, and you have money. So where you get money from? You have a big rich family with dead and left money with you? I tell you, you know, hmm? that blessing come in many ways. Oh, it dropped from the sky like manna. I'm telling you, it's almost <laughs> like that. <laughs> but, but yes, I've been provided for. And I try not to get real, man. problem to anybody. Get but, real, man. No, I've been provided for. Get real. Huh? You have children? Ten. You have ten children? Yes. How much woman? Well, it, it was a, a result of two. But, two. Uh, yeah, but uh, as a result of um, trying to keep the peace. So how much one have for you? How much the other one one have for you? Six and four. Six and four. The whole of them are alive? Yeah, all of them. So is it them old enough that you do have to it's work for them? About all of them in school. <laughs> all of them in school? <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> So you have no school for your January I come. I'm telling you. So you're well rich. You're a rich man. Rich in spirit. No, I'm not about school fee rich. Wisdom. No, wisdom can't pay your school fee. I tell you that I'd use my wisdom. To pay the school fee. To pay the school fee. To get what is necessary. So that, that means that it's money to pay school fee. Yes, yes. So how you get that money through your wisdom? Tell me. Well, it's a whole, it's a long story. No, well, tell me the short, short version. About tell me the edited version. 20 years, 20 odd years ago, I mm. said that if I am to serve God in, in the way that a man is supposed to serve, you can't mm. serve him and money. Yeah, but I now I serve money. Myself, I, have say, I said, you have 10 picnics. Yes. And the 10 of them go to school. Yes. So I know that January come. Uh -huh. It's not free business that go on at school now. Yes. You have to find books. 
it, it's really a big business. Yeah. But may I say now, as a father of ten children, yes. how do you acquire money to send your children to school? That simple question. You don't make it intellectual, Rasta. Uh -huh. It's a simple, rotted question, may I ask you. Well, how do you acquire money to send your ten children to school? Well, I can't build a house, you know. You build a house? Mm -hmm. uh, so you're the architect? Not necessarily. I just have a piece of land and I um, put up a few rooms and rent them. So you, you, you get money from rental of house? Yes. No, no, that may answer, Reggie. You know, you go to so and so. Uh, but you say sometimes. You sound like you know, a man, Reggie. You know, you're just a grown bush, so. <laughs> eh? That's a simple question I ask you. You love to ask too much intellectual thing about Jesus and Philosophy, right? No, man. You have simple to secure thing. your soul. You, you know, you're secure not, your soul. You know, you're not, you know, My soul is secure, man. Eh? There's nothing I can do outside of what is happening here. And nothing can happen to me outside of what is happening here. But you know, every man's life is limited. Of course. And, and, 150 and, and, years from now, none of us who is living now will be here. Yeah, and, and the fact that we know this is a fact, mm -hmm. that um, immortality is, is, we're all existing under that um, death. Mm -hmm. It is for us living beings mm -hmm. to try to understand not only life that we live, but the death that we have to face, you know. No, and, you can't. That is where watcha. Christ himself come in. No, man, watch out, man. That is where Dead comes Christ. when no man look, man. Huh? Dead comes when no man look. So you want to know. True. But you can't. All you can do is prepare for who you're going to live in the life here. True. So wake up when you're dead? Yes. I don't know what you can do to prepare for that. Well, More than just try to eat good 2, food. 2,000 years ago. And don't get sick. 2,000 years ago, the yeah. Messiah himself make that way clear. No, man, that's a belief, man. Um, that's what I try to show you. Don't try to impose your belief on me. You hear a talking anything what I listen to you. Don't try to impose your belief on me. But I if don't you don't believe, want to impose my belief on you, then I you don't should, believe in your Jesus Christ. You, you should let it rest. Eh? You should let it rest. No, because you know what? It's man like you make a keep talking about it. No, man. I think you're still troubled by the fact that you will not overcome Christianity. No, it's a man like you. Believe, the fact that you cannot explain it rationally. Explain what? There, but there's no rationality to Christian belief. There's no rationality to Christian belief. It's a faith. Well, there's no rationality yeah. to Christian belief. Christian belief is based upon of faith and faith alone. Well, for it to exist, faith don't have to have no rationality. Two thousand years ago, then a lot of faith would have to be. <coughs> no. Absolutely. The reason why Christianity has existed so long yeah. is because of the crusades and the cruelty no, man, to impose a, this religion right and other people. But it's not Roman... Wait there. Yeah. Wait there. Who's You know that most countries that adhere to Christianity, was, it was forced on them by people outside of their country? No, if I go back into time yes when uh, when the disciples were going out yeah where they go they wasn't the going out going out where they wasn't in their own country into the world you know which world be yourself man uh, which where disciples where go into which world christianity did spread in where the disciples go i mean they, they started off from jerusalem yeah and go where and they spread themselves some went to ethiopia some went to egypt some yeah. went to spain which disciple to... go to ethiopia huh which disciple go to ethiopia well, one of the disciples made... Uh, no, which disciple got to eat up here? I don't know that story. Well... I know fifth, them said Philip Bapel eat up here, and you know. And him go back to eat up here and spread the gospel. Yes. But which disciple you know got to eat up here? Well, yeah, but you see, the thing is, the Ethiopians and the people that who, who once inhabited Jerusalem at the time of Christ were mm. very much related, you know. Related in what way? In what way? Eh? In what way? Racial, racially and religious belief because the, the um, Ethiopians were long anticipating the, the coming Messiah. You know, long yeah. before the Ethiopians are, are not anticipating the coming. When the Ethiopians are anticipating coming of Christ, is Philip baptized an Ethiopian you know, can him go there with it? Where you about the Antipia? coming of the Messiah had to, had to be a, a, a vision. Before the come a reality. That is where you imagine. No, 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 no. There's no record of what you said. Yeah. Philip baptized an Ethiopian eunuch, and the Ethiopian eunuch go back to Ethiopia it with it. It wouldn't mean anything to him if they weren't living into that. Sort no, of no, no, no. It's colonialism. 
No, you're, you're, it's no, colonialism. It's the present form of Christianity religion. Christianity colonized the whole Western world and part of the Eastern the world. present form of religion. Christianity. Assist, Christianity yes. is perpetuated by violence. Historically, Christianity is a violent religion. No, Christianity no, is what the men them wrong. use to control Africa, India. You have it all wrong. Show me says lie, I tell. I wish I had done already, you know. Show me says lie, I tell. Listen, man. You Tell me which country, who, no, who, who, is, who, is the, who is the biggest perpetrator of the Christian crusade? The, the Roman crusaders. Catholics. The crusaders. The Roman Catholics. How did the crusaders go about? Roman Catholics. The crusaders kill Muslims, kill Jews. The, 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 Roman Catholics. The, 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 the Spanish Inquisition kill off anybody. Roman Catholics. But it's Christianity. Wait. When did Europe become Europe? Europe is a new name, you know. It's Christendom, it used to name, you know. Europe used to name Christendom. It's just that they them call it Europe. Because the whole of Europe was Christian. So are you saying now Christ himself was a European then? No, Christ. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ is a Greek Roman mythology. I tell you, I have to tell you that. No. There is no man on earth that didn't name Jesus Christ. All right. For argument. No, no argument, no sake. No there sake. was... And no, we don't have fear and see it. We are telling you, say, yes. Christianity uh -huh. got big through murder, through robbery, through crusading, killing. But Emperor Yelis himself was the last of the crusader king, you know? Cru which part of him go for crusader? In his own country. Oh, you can't crusader. Oh, hey, don't be stupid, man. No, I'm telling you. Don't be an asshole, man. With the assistance. Don't be an asshole, man, at 25 minutes of work. With the assistance Mr. of Rome, France. Don't be an asshole. With the assistance of Rome, France, and England, the emperor was assisted. My brethren. The emperor was assisted. My brethren. To prevent Ethiopia from becoming an Islamic kingdom. My brethren. Don't be an asshole. Listen to what I say. Go back to the same book. Going back. Leonard going Moses back. Book. Going back. Listen yes. to me. Go back you, to that book. I'm telling you. Yes. That Christianity. Christianity. The history of Christianity has shown me that most of the places in the world that has taken on to Christianity, it got there through killing, raping, Pilbridge and everything that you call you that Christian is again. And you what we have to do now? Yeah. We have to leave. Because Ran Mushet stand up behind me at 25 minutes of 4. Alright. Alright, sir. All right, you and you say, if you never start talking about Jesus, you can call me again, you know. <laughs> you so long I don't talk about this subject. Well, you keep talking. And now I can't tell you call I me think again. You're going to get converted eventually. Oh. You know? Because no you see, man I shall try to you try convert me. But no man shall enter Zion. With Zion. You know why I'm not a Zion? Eh? Well, you Jerusalem belong to us, you know. And you only, you can only be a Christ to go back there. Me no want to go to Zion. You want to go to Jerusalem? Me say, for what? Me go to Jerusalem already. You see the people who are in Jerusalem now, they don't really belong there, you know. Me never see the people there. They're just a part of that. They're just a part of that prophecy. Which me never see the people who are in Jerusalem belong there. Me say, me go to Jerusalem already. Yeah. Jerusalem is a geographical place in Israel. I've yeah. been there already. Yes. I'm not talking about the people who occupy it. But Jerusalem belongs to Christ. Which Christ? The coming Messiah. Here we are. Go tell the Palestinian that Blombard. <laughs> Where you go, sir? Go tell the... Oh, Blombard. I'm my bad one, that. <laughs> them can't lock me up for that. Go tell the Blombard Palestinian them that. Anyway, we're gone. Yeah, thank you. All right. This is the cousin of the RFM. We're gone, you know. What do you say? That virgin there a long time. No call me, you know. Hey, yes. Yes, if I will go back for that subject, yeah? <laughs> Him call me. And if I was a man, we'll look... What do you call it? Fine. What do you call it? When your program go up? Oh, uh, rating. Rating? Yeah. I don't talk about Jesus every night. <laughs> yes. If I talk about Jesus every night, all the, all the people who hate me, <laughs> come on them radio. I call it. Yeah. But if the family come out for it, all them man in the call again. <laughs> so we are going to this junior. Yeah. This is the cutting edge. Yeah. And I refer him. Come